civilian for women as well as their uh, medical ICU. So <clears throat> just a brief introduction of Texas Medical Center. It's like one of the biggest medical centers. All the buildings that you see there are part of Texas Medical Center. We have almost about um, 10,000 patient beds and close to 2,000 medical ICU, surgical transplant ICU beds. And we perform about um, roughly close to, um, close to 200 um, surgeries in a year. And uh, this is Baylor College of Medicine. We have close to 8,000 faculty and close to about 1,100 clinical residents, so many different fellows. Uh, within pulmonary, we have about um, 100 plus fellows. Um, so briefly, in terms of education, we kind of rank first in different specialties, as well as research. We have about $630 million worth of funding for different things. Um, especially in COVID-19, would it be uh, studies for vaccination as well as for remdesivir, for pestilizumab. Um, my chief was actually the first author for most of these studies as well. And uh, Baylor almost covered half of the Texas Medical Center. Um, Bent Top Hospital is our county hospital. We also cover multiple um, Texas children and um, other children hospitals. Uh, we also cover the VA hospital, which is the biggest uh, VA in the country. Um, as well as uh, multiple other cancer centers, including MD Anderson. Um, so I'm not going to present the data for uh, VA hospital because I was not allowed to, um, as well as county. So what I'll do is I'll present the data for the private side, which is the um, CHI Texas division. We have 11 hospitals in um, Houston. So this is going through two years. <clears throat> the surge, which started in 2020 and going all the way to uh, in February 2022, we have almost four surgeries. The last one was Omicron, before that was Delta. And then what I'm showing you is the acute inpatient as well as the emergency department um, visits. These are different hospitals that we have. Um, if you look at the acute inpatient, meaning patients that we admitted, uh, there are about 17,000 patients, and including rehab, um, still nursing facility and all that, we saw about 50,000 patients um, just within the private side. Um, just distribution of um, you know male versus female. We saw more male patients being admitted uh, and more females which were admitted to the uh, emergency room. And then in terms of uh, the race distribution, we saw more white, just the population that Houston had, uh, and then followed by black and then um, Hispanic and um, Asian as well. In terms of uh, admission by the age group, we have more older patients which were admitted. And then we have more younger patients who are just coming to the ED and then they were just being discharged from there. Um, and then in terms of uh, peer mix, we saw mainly Medicare and private patients. Again, we're um, uh, the private side, so that's kind of um, the majority of that. But briefly, coming uh, to uh, what we saw in terms of length of stay, in U.S. it's like a big thing, like how long they stay in the hospital, especially in the ICU. And then what I have is the um, comparison um, to the non-COVID patients as well as the COVID patients. So, uh, multiple different surges, multiple hospitals. What we have is, on an average, a patient stays in our hospital for about four days. But if you look at the COVID-19 patients, they stay for about eight days. And that was the reason that we got a lot of federal funding because, you know, the DRGs would not cover that. Um, our hospital got close to $400 million uh, in terms of the federal funding um, uh, due to COVID-19. In terms of mortality, what I'm showing you on the left side is the mortality that we have for non-COVID patients. And again, a lot of these hospitals, especially the main hospital, which is on top, Baylor St. Luke's Medical Center, is a transplant facility. And in terms of uh, mortality, or mortality is 2.7%. Uh, but if you look at COVID-19 cases, mortality did go up to 13.5%. But overall, when we put all the hospitals together, for about 14,000 patients, the mortality was about 11 um, then in terms of uh, the mortality by age group, uh, there was a, you know, a spike that happened when you get to age about 50 and then the older you get, the more comorbidities you have, your, your mortality goes up and again it's about 11 percent or so and an average, the highest was about 17 um, percent. Then in terms of mortality that we saw based on different surges, it, it was about the same except during the Delta surge we saw like a slightly increase 
in mortality, and I think probably because we did more ECMOs during that time. And I'll see if I can show you some of that data as well. Um, yeah, but, but still overall, our COVID-19 mortality, including vented patients, all the admitted patients, was still about 11.3%. Um, in terms of the ICU utilization, as, as you guys know, it, it's very expensive. You know, in average, in America, uh, the rent for the ICU room is about $3,000. Uh, and the rent for a non-ICU room is about $500. So it's like expensionally different. And then if you put someone in ECMO, then the rent goes up tremendously. It's up to $10,000 a day. Um, so we, we always look for that. Uh, I think in the first surge, we were intubating more patients because we just did not know what to do for them. There was no treatment available at that time. So um, we were using almost 28 to 30 percent of ICU uh, utilization during the first surge. But as we get more experience, as we were able to put more patients on the floor for high flow, oxygen and all that, so our ICU utilization went down. Uh, overall, it was about 22%. Generally, we only put 14 to 15 percent of a patient in the ICU, and again, this is transplant. There's a lot of other pre-transplant patients. In terms of length of stay, we briefly talked about it. It's about four versus 10, and then this was the ventilator use. We used more ventilator initially, but as uh, we were getting more experience, we used a lot of BiPAP. We also used like helmet ventilation. We also used uh, a lot of other non-invasive uh, ways and then decrease the, ice, uh, the ventilator utilization. So um, when we look at overall for our population, um, during the same time, we use about 6% of ventilator in non-COVID patients. Uh, but for COVID, our utilization was about 14%. Um, the first surge, of course, was slightly higher. But as we uh, kind of learned more about it, we were um, down in terms of the uh, ventilator utilization. Uh, vent days, on an average, were very aggressive, like for even cardiothoracic patients, we extubate them in six hours. That's like the protocol after cabbage, after valve, and surgery. Um, so overall, the rise of the vent utilization in terms of days is about 6.7 days. But for COVID, we were as high as 20 days. We're treating them pretty early. Within the uh, you know, COVID ICU, we had uh, a lot of interventional pulmonologists who will just treat them right away uh, within like seven to 10 days, and then we'll send them to uh, the skilled nurse. And then um, after, you know, we actually, because we were the site for uh, COVID vaccine, we were able to vaccine a lot of our patients, especially elderly, pretty early. I think we got vaccine uh, maybe in June and July um, for uh, trials. Uh, and we saw like more patients were coming in if they were unvaccinated. There were only a few vaccinated. The majority of them were actually immunocompromised because of transplant. We're a huge transplant center. We perform about 500 transplants a year. Um, so that was the majority of it. Um, now briefly talking about what kind of lessons we learned from it uh, when we uh, put everything together. One is that uh, to me personally, again, if you look at it, our ICU utilization is very low, our mortality is very low, and when you work in some kind of bad ICU, you feel like everything is treatable, right? Um, you have these patients coming in with multi-system organ failure, you put them on like ECMO and they get better and you feel like, okay, that's wonderful. But during COVID, when there were people coming in like 20 years, 30 years old, and they were just dying from it, um, that made me realize that, you know, the life is very precious. You just, just celebrate every moment that you have, um, and then you should just um, cherish um, all that. Now, the other thing that we did was we created um, daily huddles as well as the consortium for multiple hospitals that we meet every week. Um, these hospitals are different, just like here, Canford, um, Padmajana, and all that. And we're able to share the data, we're able to share a lot of other sets as well as processes so that it was helpful uh, for everybody. Um, and then we're able to create like standardization of protocols and stuff. And then we did integration, like um, almost every day, uh, a lot of the sheets from the ICU, from emergency rooms, inpatient with me, and then we'll have our C-suite people, like CEO, CFO, um, come in there as well as facilities, biomed, uh, infection prevention, infectious disease, uh, as well as nursing colleagues, respiratory therapists, and we'll just create a plan and then just implement a housewife within our hospital as well as all the assisted hospitals. The other thing that we did is we realized that it's very difficult because we're just not meeting face to face. It's like how to communicate with people. Um, so what we did is like mass um, emails, mass, uh, we have like secure private connect, messaging, a lot of Zoom meetings, and then disseminating into the section uh, region as well as a lot of other things. Uh, in terms of innovation, uh, what we did was um, we actually <coughs> brought the uh, ventilator out, outside of the ICU room so the respiratory therapist does not have to go in. 
We brought the uh, nursing um, tubes and stuff outside the um, ICU so they don't have to go in. Uh, we changed a lot of things in terms of, you know, intubation box, extubation boxes, um, you know, um, as well as a lot of other things like creating, um, you know, respiratory team as well as uh, the anesthesia team who can just intubate the patient so that the risk is going to be low. We also bought a lot of uh, decontaminators, sterilizers for personal use as well as uh, for the whole facility so that we can decrease the amount of PPE use uh, during that. So I think that was something which was helpful. And then on top of that, um, research. Uh, we had all the trials that we did, as I said, for vaccination as well as for remdesivir, for indacta, for penicillinib, and that was helpful so that you can um, offer that treatment early um, in these stages. What we realized was that a lot of our uh, people were getting sick. We had early about 10 persons sick, uh, you know, of the staff which was getting sick. Uh, we had a lot of backups that we created for them, uh, a lot of, you know, uh, workforces downtime that, that we give them so that they will be able to uh, take some time off. Uh, we also kind of monitored them for burnout, uh, but still the burnout was pretty high. Um, and then a lot of leaders will just talk to them, ask their stressors and other things um, so that we can uh, keep an eye on them. Uh, one other thing that we did was uh, we actually taught our medicine doctors how to manage patients. We did like a crash course for them uh, so that they can manage the ventilator, the high flow, the oxygen, and so many other things and created like water sets so that it's easy for them. Uh, we also created uh, a tele IC hub for the old Texas Division, which is 17 hospitals, um, so that we can manage them as well as do a consult for the uh, complicated patients who can have come to that. Um, the other thing that we did is um, it's different for, for us in the U.S. where everything is very protocolized. Uh, everything is protocolized where you're just looking for you know, data and other things. And, um, uh, but in this case, we don't have anything. So we just have to start from scratch and create your own policies. Um, so we created like best practices which was then um, sent to like almost 120 hospitals. Um, and um, then we did a lot of grand rounds of Q and A's for the region as well as uh, national lectures. Um, you know, families were not being updated because they were not able to come in. There was a ban on them, so what we did was we had a lot of volunteer staff will just come in. They'll do the FaceTime with the patients and families. They'll do um, Zoom as well as a lot of end-of-life visits um, with the family. And then protect your staff, um, you know, with PPE, with air scrubbers, um, so that you can just change the uh, ventilation in the, um, in the rooms, um, sterilizers, uh, both commercial as well as uh, personal. Uh, minimizing the consultants so that they don't have to come in like we in ICU said that no one is allowed to come in like nephrology, ID, cardiology unless you really need to so that you can decrease the amount of uh, PPE usage and then we brought everything outside the room so that um, the nurses don't have to go in multiple times. We track a lot of data as you see here uh, for the 11 hospitals we also have data for VA, for Ventov and others and then we were just sharing it with most of the staff so they're able to see how are we doing. Uh, when you were on the ground, it felt like the mortality was very high, but when you look at the data, it seems like it was actually not that bad. And, and then celebrate the victories. I mean, we had our first ECMO decannulation, we just threw a big party in there. We had our first COVID transplant, again, we just publicized locally as well as nationally. And then we also did like an ECMO um, on a pregnant patient who was still pregnant and then decannulated after delivery. So we're able to just publicize that, celebrate that, so that was a big thing for the family and our staff. Um, and I think. That's all I have. And then a lot of caffeine. We put like coffee machines everywhere so that people can be caffeinated and they'll be happy. Um, and uh, that's it for me. Um, I actually had to leave, so I won't be able to be for, there for the Q and A session. But this is my email. If anyone has any questions, feel free to just email.
on the stage and give his talk, Dr. Faisal Sultan, the CEO and Consultant Commission of Medicine and Infectious Disease of Pakistan, and he will be talking about improving care of critically ill, the role of institutions and policy makers. Thank you. I think all that needs to be said is that so Faisal is here. Makers, uh, which is somewhat broad. So I will be leaning into some of my previous experience in the government, and uh, but also uh, from from an institutional perspective as well. And I'll be using a little bit of information and data as far as the COVID pandemic is concerned in terms of uh, preparedness and, and, and so on. So critically ill. Now, the thing is, I think that sooner or later, the only people that will remain in hospitals will be those that are truly critically ill. As inpatient medicine moves more and more into ambulatory medicine, and as surgical specialties keep their patients in for shorter and shorter duration as it should be, the only people that will actually remain truly in the hospital will be those that cannot be cared for at home, and those are the critically ill. Well. So what do decision makers or policy makers do, or influence, or put together to make sure that critical care is delivered well? Now, there are a few key domains. First and foremost, without human resource, you cannot get anywhere. Even in the US, you just heard that they actually had to upskill some of their existing resource and had to retrain some of their resource during COVID. And the same happened to a large extent in Pakistan as well. A lot of people, and you know, there was the usual joke, don't get done well, or you will have orthopedic surgeons care caring for your, you know, uh, ventilator management. And so um, it was a joke, but at the end of the day, this is what was going on. In other words, many of us who were not normally trained were forced into doing uh, critical care. Therefore, um, HR is one of the first uh, and important aspects. The other bit that governments or policy makers or decision makers can do is through enforcement of standards. Okay, governmental institutions and organizations necessarily are not as part of the delivery of care. But what they definitely can be a part of, in almost all situations, is enforcement of a standard of care. So standards are crucially important as far as government is concerned. Infrastructure, that is everything. You know, from, from buildings to making sure that there is oxygen, to, to making sure uh, that you have uh, appropriate diagnostic facilities, that you have appropriate communications, sharing of data, and so on. And talk a little bit about it. Money makes the bear go, so financing is an important bit. I'll tell you how in this country a quiet revolution is taking place and we don't even realize it's going on, which is financing of a lot of inpatient care. When you have any financing available, everything else starts to follow. So the same program is one such example. And lastly, legislation. So human resources. Now, you can have a very long list, but I've just put this up as in the context of critical care. You obviously need physicians. Uh, it's a high, it's, it's a disease with a high burnout rate, and uh, with relatively, uh, compared to many specialties, uh, a, a, you know, a, a modest income framework, if I could call it. So therefore, it is very important that the right framework exists to train the right number of critical care physicians, and that they are correctly critical trained. Just because you've done anesthesia does not mean you've done critical. Just because you've done internal medicine does not mean you've done critical care and so on. So whichever part you come from, from the surgical intensive side, from the anesthesia intensive side of the internal medicine, you must have had an appropriate care. And this dovetails into this whole concept of standards. So a little bit more on that. Now again, nurses. Uh, there's hardly an institution, there are very few institutions in this country that actually formally train nurses in critical care as the other thing. Look, the physicians come, they look at the patient, they, they, they do a diagnostic evaluation, they will do interventions, and then they move away. The person at the bedside all through the three shifts is your nurse. Is there a nurse in the room here? We should have, really, on a, in, a, in a session like this. So, the, the development and, and upgradation of nurses to be able to provide critical care is crucial. And the, the very fact that uh, we, we have shortage of nurses that translates into shortage of critical care nurses. Respiratory therapists, again, it goes without saying. You're not going to be able to manage ventilators without care. 
The other thing that governments can and should do, and policymakers can and should do, and policymakers include people like our friend Professor Gondel here, who's, who's running an institution. So a policymaker is not necessarily a governmental minister or a secretary of health. It's actually uh, a lot of our medical leadership uh, that can and do these things. Uh, and it's to make sure you have appropriate diagnostics, and I'll show you a few examples. Uh, without appropriate diagnostics, you cannot provide critical care. And it's not just appropriate diagnostics, it's appropriate diagnostics that are in time, available, and in real time. What's the use of an ABG if it arrives four hours later? Therapeutics. Access to medicines. Here is a country in which, when the government increased the price of atropine from one rupee something to four rupees something, there was a few or five pounds of pieces of the white rupee. Because at the end, atropine was not available. So the availability of appropriate antimicrobials, uh, availability of appropriate uh, medications and other technologies. You've heard ECMO. You've seen ECMO. So the point is that if those are not made available, then the ability to provide critical care is, is an issue. And of course, that goes the same uh, and, and speaks the same as far as the equipment is concerned. Uh, we heard a lot of noise about ventilators being made within Pakistan, a lot were manufactured and made, but for them to come to real use is another matter. Um, we'll talk about evacuation. Again, you cannot get good critical care unless you get people, the injured on the road, to yourself. Fortunately, we do have an EMS now, and it works well, but I think it, it requires perhaps some further improvement. The ICUs are there. Now, we talked about diagnostics, and I'll just share this COVID example. In COVID, it started out with four labs that were doing a PCR for this thing. It went up to, uh, you know, just short of 200. The testing capacity went from a few hundred to a notional capacity of over 100,000 deaths a day. The critical care capacity went up. Oxygen, I particularly talk about oxygen, and this is a classic example of how a small change, a very small change at the policy level has an impact that impacts everyone. In the entire four or five waves of COVID, Pakistan did not run out of oxygen. And I can assure you we would have run out had one important intervention not been done. And I'll share that. Information systems. Uh, and you know, self-sufficiency in some areas. You heard about information flow. Now it is for in a pandemic at least, it is crucially important to be able to gather that information. There are no existing bona fide systems to be able to flow information from one direction up and from the top down to make viable decision making. This was built in the pandemic. And you know what was used? The polio dashboard, the polio database was actually put in, was marshaled into this. So a few fields were added and that was actually used. Otherwise, we would have had no central visibility of what was going on. I won't bore you with all this, but this was connectivity of a number of different platforms. Provincial, federal, local, private, non-private, to all plug into one system so that the, the, the data that you heard from the system was coming out. It was a single, a single truth. Uh, there also the data needed to come from 4,000 different facilities. Try getting it from one, getting it from 4,000 in a country like Pakistan was a challenge. But this is exactly where policy makers and decision makers need come in. Testing. You need to have, you heard that you needed to put out uh, guidelines. Think that the field was and will continue to move. And I don't mean just COVID, critical care in general. So you need to have national guidelines. This is where the role of policy makers and uh, decision makers comes in. Um, and of course, uh, in our case, this was linked to the uh, NADRA database. Again, this is the build-up of the capacity. A little bit about oxygen. So, I have to tell you the story very briefly. Maybe we'll talk about it more in the afternoon. Uh, the fact is that when we evaluated it initially, um, the a capacity in the system, think about it, was 500 metric tons per day. This was the national capacity. Had that remained at 500, you would have run out of oxygen in every single wave. Every single wave of oxygen the requirement thi in healthcare would have tripped that capacity. Why it not, did not get tripped? Because at some date in June 2020, somebody asked, "Can do we have enough oxygen? The raw supply of oxygen?" And the initial assumption was, "Yes, industrial oxygen will be 
when it was actually evaluated, it was that industrial diversion was happening because industry was doing it, and so therefore healthcare was using a disproportionate amount of oxygen, and therefore you had not felt the shortage. But in subsequent waves, you would have more felt the shortage. And so what was done? 300 metric tons were added. How much? 500. Motive was done. 500 metric tons, 324 tons per day was added. How? By unlocking a few steps. कई डेड प्लांट पड़ा था, प्लांट की बिजली की नहीं लगी थी, किसी की गैस सप्लाई की प्रॉब्लम थी, किसी का कोई एफबीआर की प्रॉब्लम थी। This is where governments come. Governments do not necessarily need to deliver care themselves, but they need to unlock the roadblocks that actually prevent that from happening. And fortunately, mercifully, Pakistan did not have a single way in which we were that we ran ran out of oxygen. These are a lot of numbers. अच्छा, capacity built up. Seven thousand beds were added into the national system in IC. 7,000. So I was talking about infrastructure. So again, governments, instead of necessarily providing care themselves, unlock the roadblocks. Make it easy for the society at large to kick in. Uh, I won't bore you with all this. Uh, it went up. So production capacity went up uh, by 324 metric tons, which was a 66% increase. It's almost unheard of in Pakistan. And I can tell you, it involved the, the cooperation of the Ministry of Industries, the industry of oxygen itself, um, from FBR to Imperial to Wapda to the, uh, you know, the, the gas people. It required absolutely every single entity. The other thing that is important for governments, see I keep focusing on either policy makers or decision makers, is to make sure that resource is used appropriately and sensibly, judiciously. You could have run out of, if everybody started wearing N95 masks, you would have run out of that. And so it was very important for the message to go out, whether and in which situations and scenarios you were to use it. Look, endless resource is not going to happen, and you can burn it all in one day. But you have to judiciously use it based on the science of the day instead of the fear of the day. So this is just a poster that was put out from in, in collaboration with a number of institutions, AKU and my own and the NIH and the federal government. Uh, I talked about standards um, and, and I won't dwell on it, but standards are important for, for that. Financing. Look, we've got poor financing overall. Current per capita expenditure, this is $42.9, but the bulk of it is coming from out-of-pocket spending. You actually, government ka spend hai, wo saathik dollar hai. This is the bit that's changing. People make a lot of noise, ji, say, kaar mein ye ho gaya, ho gaya. At the end of the day, yeah, thank you. The, the fact is that you are financing something that otherwise may not have the money to move on. And once you show money, to the kids, this ke liye paisa ho gaya hai, the infrastructure gets built up themselves. Lastly, legislation. I have told you about health care workers. Uh, or for a hundred other things. For the NIH. All of this happens in these hallowed and, and wanted chambers of our government. And, and it is very important for this legislation to happen. For you to have an upgrade of the kind of doctors that are coming out. I know there's a lot of noise about things like the national licensing exam. Because the MDCAT is difficult. The fact is, the ultimate stakeholder for policy makers and decision makers is not us, not the doctors. It's the man outside. When he or she comes and sits in front of you, does he get a qualified doctor in front of him or not? Or a qualified nurse or not? And that is where the role of standards and of legislation uh, that comes in. And I'm afraid some of it is being uh, dismantled already. It's, it's sad. But this is how... Uh, Life is, and we always never give up. And so, inshallah, uh, we will uh, see uh, better standards tomorrow. Thank you. Uh, one thing that I've learned from Professor is that he has always suggested that we should institu institutionalize things, the changes that we want to bring in. Otherwise, one day you make a change, next day, the next day, the government comes in and it is swept away. So, I think that's a very important lesson to learn for all those people who are involved in uh, policy making. So with the permission of the chairman and the next speaker, Rick Balsa, uh, can you give uh, us another five minutes for questions? Uh, because he has to leave, and uh, then we call after that and also be ready as well. I think we have the question now, if, with your permission, sir. Sir, please, yeah.
So, uh, Faisal, uh, any questions for Faisal? You have to ask Faisal about COVID and ACOG. Just to mark my question, what are your recommendations with the use of remdesivir uh, IV in case of COVID pneumonia? Look, remdesivir was one of those interventions which probably does have a place. All I'll tell you is that all these interventions, all of them, are moving targets. Some of us kept saying, don't use chloroquine, don't use macrolides, but mashallah, alhamdulillah, Mari, medical community, the overprescription that we saw of many of these, of steroids, of uh, you know, azithromycin, was just unbelievable and obscene. So all I will tell you is that, yes, remdesivir is one of those that actually has a place, but the fact is, uh, use it in the correct scenario, and please look at the guidelines as they exist today, a moving target. Thank you for asking these questions and allowing me to respond to this. Thank you. Any other? The real issue is that government in Pakistan, and, and many of those who go outside forget this, and, and we, we, none of us in Pakistan also remember this, is that health is a completely divorced subject. The federal government has absolutely little say in how healthcare delivery, mind you, not legislation, not regulation, healthcare delivery happens. So the tools that were available were information and education, and we put that out, and in fact we repeatedly put out the difficulty of um, not using, or the risks of not using inappropriate medications. But because at this time, the prescription uh, regime is not effectively enforced, that has to be done provincially. That is not done, and so therefore, almost exclusively across the country. This river federal government ke paas hai through track. It can be done, and should be done, and inshallah at some point will be done. Uh, but that is one uh, important area. But beyond that, even in countries where there is fair bit of regulation, the US UK, there was also again over prescription. Education of the healthcare system and of the public uh, was a prescription. So, Sir, please, end of question. But please tell us about either. Azithromycin was exactly what you pointed out. But that was a fear that if you have such massive views, sooner or later you will be different. How about which? I don't know how to scare people, but anyway. It's, it's, we, we have some anticipated difficulties coming in there. So it's important to make sure that vaccination wherever used, one, salmonella, two, hygiene. They can, uh, typhoid in those countries, where typhoid control work, uh, the control of typhoid predated the availability of antimicrobials. So it's actually the <coughs> wash, there's the sanitation part of life that helps uh, to control this. None of us, I can assure you, that you can go culture the water from the tap almost in any locality in this city and you will get coliform contamination. Unfortunately, now. The one where I live in is a very prestigious society and I and I always pride myself getting on the water taps of and I'm every time, all through. Except I moved into this house, I don't want to say where. And my wife said, Achha, yeah, chalo, karke to dekhi, test to karo, test to karo, test to karo. And so, I baad ele na khas tha, using bottle kind of water. So, we need to sort and fix that. Kya faida, tarakki ka agaram, tuti se paani pite ve, parishan. So, that's my take on it. The public health side is more important, anti-microbials vaati jati rahi. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, so my next question is, um, uh, in your experience, in the current uh, wave of so-called, what we are calling viral infections, uh, what we have experienced during the last two uh, months specifically in the ICUs and the medical wards, is that patients present with typical symptoms of COVID. They turn out COVID negative. They have infiltrations on, in the lungs and they die. Uh, despite of the fact that they are not having comorbid and other conditions uh, due to uh, severe complications like myocarditis or uh, transaminitis, liver failure, further hepatic failure, renal failure. Do you think this, in your practice, would you like to share, is this more in the current relatively fewer cases, but we find that they turn out to be uh, 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 they, uh, the outcome is proving to be worse in the last two to three months. 
this is a, an observation which has not been as yet, uh, we need to work upon it, but we need to know your experience in uh, your sentence. Yeah, my experience will probably not be too relevant in the sense that each of the institution experience you have uh, doesn't say much other than glaring so it's important to flag it as you are. So what is it? So look, globally there is increase in RSV in children. You have an increase in influenza. You have a rebound. In those how influenza went away like two years you did not see any influenza. Almost none. And then it made a difference. So it could be that. But again, the other thing is that just because we saw COVID, I used to say, I used to hear this. I said, yeah, because that's the first time you're starting to see or bother about what a CT scan looks like with the ground glassing or um, you know changes. There are a hundred other things to do. When is the last time we started to look for pneumocystis, for example, or so many other things, or other viral infections? So when I say why is it that we all have so much time to study COVID? Because we have had things. We need to get better diagnostics, viral diagnostics, make sure that what we are finding is not PCR negative, but it's very important to be able to get to those diagnoses, re-culture, culture, review, uh, serologic tests, and perhaps molecular tests, and those multi-panel PCRs that actually detect things. So, thank you again for a very pertinent question. I see who's man with Shoka when I use the so who is fine. About an hour regarding COVID. Uh, so thank you very much, Basil. And the next uh, speaker is uh, Dr. Iqbal Hussain. He will be introduced by the uh, chair. <laughs> Professor, uh, Dr. Faisal Deeds, we'll uh, request him to come to the stage and the chair of the session, Professor Khalid Masood Bodhul Sahab, Dr. Asif Tafel, to finally come to the stage uh, for the, yeah, he's, he's uh, downstairs. So uh, we will request and we'll uh, also request Dr. Taki, uh, Professor Mehmood Shokar. If you could kindly join us on stage. We would never see pandemic, but uh, 
we were faced with that situation. Uh, and uh, like I said, we have launched the transform services to adopt in this early, but we did we did the team meeting. Uh, us sare process mein humne kya kiya? We have conducted multiple workshops, just me. Uh, ventilator, uh, upper airway management, uh, point of care ultrasound. These were all the things that we have already done. So, it's the benefit that when the COVID pandemic hit, so we were sort of trained. And I will tell you that our ICU, why it became a different ICU, why it became a different ICU, it's a sort of anomaly that become as compared to uh, many other hospitals and I'll, I'll mention uh, some of those things. So this is our ICU team and in this team we had hepatopoly surgeons with us, we had a transplant surgeon with us and the nephrologist because all the services were shut down so the other physicians they come on board they became a part of the ICU team. So what I'll go through is um, how we prepare ourselves when we uh, got uh, the challenge of COVID, what type of education training we did, uh, safety of staff, patient care at bedside, and evidence-based care. Evidence-based care ke baare mein bas thoda zeh keh dun ke ab log ek bahut mushur app dekha hoga hai, waiting ka zikr hua humne ya suna, my team colleague ne. तो एक बहुत मशहूर ऐड है उसमें फिनिश का जो होता है ना दिमाग का कीड़ा था जब आपने लोगों ने देखा होगा इट हैज नो रोल वी हैव नेवर यूज्ड इट सेम थिंग गोस फॉर हाइड्रोक्सिल क्लोरोक्विन वी डिड नॉट यूज इट एट ऑल एंड वी डिड नॉट यूज आल्सो कन्वर्सेंट प्लाज्मा बिकॉज़ वी एज यू नो एज़ फार एज़ द एविडेंस बेस इज कंसर्न वी जस्ट फॉलो दैट इट मे साउंड लिटिल डिफिकल्ट बट व्हेन यू हैव अ a focus group, trust me, it's not difficult. So, preparation ke hawale se, uh, what we did, we designed the SOPs, admission discharge process. We uh, we had the full plan to identify the medicines that we have, what type of medicines we are going to use, and most importantly, we didn't use any things. We didn't use any things, we already knew that. Shuru mein hume kaafi difficulty hui, lekin I think our physician group and our esteemed colleagues in different facilities, they were very cognizant ke that's fine, that's their choice, they don't want to use it. In the common practice mein kaafi chizhe loog use kar rahe the. And what we come up with is smart schedule to help our junior staff to cope up with the stress. So, dawning and doffing ke hawaale se yeh ke I don't recall ke hum ne kabhi bhi kisi physician ko junior physician including myself and senior staff they went inside without the proper training of dawning and doffing. We had a checklist point jis mein jab tak ho us ne pass ni kiya ho gai that person would not go inside and see the patient. Or we were lucky enough that we have our own strategic plan how to deal with the uh, certain equipments that we procure and we will be talking about that. So what we did is we got the uh, positive uh, uh, respirator, purified air respirator, pepper. We were the first one in Pakistan that we used that. We procured two machines. Then after that uh, our hospital provided funding and we got four additional. Our, uh, we got the full face and half face mask. We, we got it way early um, and later it was adopted by other hospitals as well. Our goal was very simple. Jo, hum log agar, we were the first warriors. Hum log fight mein hai, we should have proper shields to protect ourselves. So during first wave, Alhamdulillah, there was no exposure of this uh, virus to our staff. And that is because of one, we were very trained. Uh, number two, uh, the government has provided you know, uh, PPEs. Number three, we kept ourselves up to date that what things we should not be doing. Even to the um, uh, interesting point, I'll mention that our medical officers, a couple of them, they were pregnant. We gave them the offer. We said, look, you guys can 
take care of these patients remotely through telemedicine. They said, no, we have a faith uh, in the system. We have enough PPEs, we have enough training, and we are ready. So they came on board on this national call. So hats off to the, the female staff, and I think they were equally there. This was our checklist uh, when we uh, developed. Uh, as you know, the first case of COVID was reported in February 2020. We got our first case uh, on April 21st. And we had many sessions of training staff. I don't think that so that's how they got trained. Our, uh, that's when we got the pepper. Uh, and I'll be talking about the bedside uh, care. We have done that 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 care. जो असेसमेंट है पेशेंट्स की बेड साइड वो की दूसरी बात ये थी कि सुबह और शाम के दोनों राउंड्स हम करते थे तीसरी चीज ये थी कि पेशेंट को लाजमी कंसल्टेंट ने इनसाइड द रूम आफ्टर डॉनिंग करके देखना होता आई डोंट रिकॉल के एनी टाइम देयर इज अ पेशेंट हु केम टू द आईसीयू एंड द कंसल्टेंट हैज नॉट सीन इट इज नॉट समथिंग के हमने मरीज देखा नहीं सो दैट हैज गिवन अ लॉट ऑफ कॉन्फिडेंस टू द रजिस्ट्रार्स एंड आई एम लकी एनफ टू हैव के uh, my senior Jassar is here, who has helped us develop, uh, Asim is here, who has developed the, the guidelines. And the registrars and the MOs, they have full confidence that the, the consultant staff is there to, to uh, mentor them. This is why we did constant renewed training. I can tell you that the point of care ultrasound we उस जमाने में यूज़ के पाकिस्तान के जितने हॉस्पिटल्स में यूज़ हुआ है वो हमने किया। हमारे मेडिकल ऑफिसर्स दे वर ट्रेन्ड टू डू पॉइंट ऑफ़ केयर अपर साउंड्स, लॉन्ग पर अपर साउंड, हार्ट अपर साउंड तू द पॉइंट। वी डिड द डीवीटी एनालिसिस बाय अवर सब बिकॉज़ रेडियोलॉजी वाज़ � our junior staff, how to interpret them. And that's how that one of the reasons the IC was different in producing results. So, uh, <coughs> so <coughs> so, <coughs> if you ARDS, there are very set guidelines. Oxia, patient, short of breath, chest x bilateral infiltrate. उसके बाद आपने क्या किया चलो ठीक है ब्लड गैस की ब्लड गैस के बाद आपने डिसाइड किया आपने इंटरवेट करते हैं एंड यू मेक योर जजमेंट बेस्ड अपॉन प्राइमरीली हाइपोक्सिया सेट्स वगैरह नोटिस अच्छा कोविड में हमें प्रॉब्लम ये हुई कि ऑलमोस्ट एवरीवन हैज हाइपोक्सिया बट दे हैड सम यूनिक फीचर दे वर नॉट इन रेस्पिरेटरी डिस्ट्रेस आई डोंट नो आप लोगों में से जो इनिशियल फेज के जो डॉक्टर्स यहाँ पे जूनियर आपने देखा है नहीं लेकिन कोविड में हमारे लिए बड़ी अजीब सी बात है चेस एक्सर्स देखने बायलैटरल सिवियर इंफ्रेट्रेट्स लेकिन दे वर लाइक कंफर्टेबल एंड दे हैव समथिंग समथिंग लाइक ब्रेडिपनिया सो वी डिसाइड वी वुड नॉट इंटुबेट हाइपोक्सिक पेशेंट जस्ट अलोन अनलेस दे हैव so, you are, we were very focused in terms of which one we are going to put them on the ventilator. Almost all of them, they get high flow or uh, high concentrated oxygen and I'm very grateful to the, to the government at that time. They provided much needed support, especially the oxygen tanks and we got the second tank during uh, the second wave. So, we were ready actually in terms of the, the resources that was uh, given to us. So, I think this is a long topic, but uh, I could have talked a lot more about what we have done in terms of bedside uh, care. We had a uh, dedicated uh, WhatsApp group. Har Sham Go Ruzana, registrar or medical officers, and sign out be discussed that. Okay, what we are going to follow uh, on those patients.
So I'll be finishing soon. Um, I've already mentioned we have not used avermectin, we have not used hydroxychloroquine, we did not use at all convalescent plasma, we did use tocilizumab, our institution was the first one which identified cytokine release syndrome, we came up with the guidelines, uh, government of uh, Punjab requested and I am very grateful to Dr. Mahmood Shaukar, he invited us, we uh, made the guidelines how to use, what are the indications, this is not some typical cytokine release shock, it's like a shock that you see like ARDS and septic shock, this is a biochemical sort of scenario that you have to identify. So, bone loan is not used. We have done about uh, 150 uh, intubations, and uh, our first wave success rate was about 45% uh, on intubation patients, and then it has dropped down to 30%. The second wave was very terrible, and we had a lot of difficulty uh, in. Uh, managing those, those patients. Almost all of them, they got proning, including intubated patients. We had a design for that. Five patients to do the, five people to do the proning, two on the right side, two on the left side, and one on the head end. So proning ke liye am not in service bohat diye. So that's why we have only one accidental extubation. Our reintubation rate and um, DBTs were much less, 3% we use high dose, uh, Sathiap and Levonox. Our, uh, I'll go to the last slide, uh, and it has the essence of our humanity. Woman, ahiyaha fakanna ma ahiyan nas in hamiya. The iska matlab ye hai ki as you all see that whoever has saved, yaha ha there is going towards the life. So it is repeated two times. Uh, as matlab ye it's not really shown in this uh, uh, translation. And jamia means. अगर जमिया नहीं भी होता तब भी बात क्लियर थी कि तमाम इंसानियत को बचाने के लिए। So Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has really pointed out whoever has saved a life as if he has really really saved the whole humanity. I'll finish here. Thank you so much. My name is Nadai Tehkar, indicated in the treatment of type 2 respiratory failure. And this COVID pneumonia, it uh, turned out to be type 1 respiratory failure. So how do you use BiPAP in type 1 respiratory failure? Uh, good question. Uh, I, and that was like this huge. Okay. So, problem was they had weird feeling of severe panic. CPAP ke saath they were getting severe panic, I'm sure. They had to use Presidex. And I will tell you that Presidex is the PKLI, Shaukat Khanam, and after that, they will use it in hospitals. So, I don't have the right answer for that. I think there was severe shunting. Technically, it doesn't make sense. You are right. But we had to use it because CPA was not comfortable. That's the answer. I have a question. Dr. Bilal, yes. I'm basically a rheumatologist. I want yes. to ask about your experience that you use tocilizumab because we've been using it in JIA and CIS. Uh, I personally think that the cut off. Because I have lived, lived in the US for 20 years, I have Pakistani society in the Nazareth. I have been with the recommendations for TOSI. And then once, I think cost is. And I realized, wow, we should not have mentioned that. And we did not know the, that part of the society, you know. So, one thing is, the other thing is that we have data collected. Actually, we were so short staffed, we were not been able to really publish anything. Because there was no way that we could have handled the pandemic and published something. Our success rate with the Rosalizo map in terms of CRS was about 55 to 60 percent. In refractory cases, we did use IVIG. Uh, either CRS did not respond to it, or either it was sort of um, adjunct to it. So we, we used IVIG uh, with that. Biochemical markers are the ones we use, and later in the third wave, by the end of second wave, we use uh, interferon, INF, uh, not the INF, uh, uh, the marker IL6. 
So that has helped us. But truly speaking, if you ask me, can I point out the exact number? No, it's somewhere around 55% that responded to the social user. Uh, thank you, Dr. for the truer sense. It has really become difficult to practice it in the pandemic situation. In the current day and age of social media and uh, information becoming very uh, evident so quickly with Donald Trump saying maybe bleach works for COVID or some professor from Florida says or oh, other mentalists, the best medicine, etc. So in these circumstances when uh, your institution is one of the uh, top institutions uh, in the country I would say, so did you ever think of creating PKLI guidelines for management of COVID to counteract those, those misinformation and mismanagements? Uh, thank you. Uh, yes, we did actually uh, quite regularly in the uh, uh, six versions. We were updating it. Um, so it was quite a regular job. But I think everyone was doing their own bit. And they were probably doing in isolation. Um, they did not uh, reach out to us. However, individually physicians, they, don't, uh, they did you know, ask us what we are doing and we, we were sharing our uh, guidelines. But uh, nationally, um, no one asked us. Um, uh, uh, I would further like, and as you just mentioned, representative from KKLI were instrumental in formulating the curricular guidelines. So what you're saying, PKLI guidelines, Actually, uh, under the chairmanship of Professor Mimu Shokar, there was this whole <clears throat> advisory group, Corona Expert Advisory Group, which was working on making these guidelines and did make these guidelines and implemented these guidelines in all the teaching hospitals. And then we tried to advocate it through various media, through training sessions, through um, uh, uh, mass media on to the family physicians and the GPs. So we did try as uh, Dr. Uh, Iqbal, while he was working in the ICUs, Dr. Javed was instrumental and all of the members, uh, I think hats off to them and Professor Mehmood Shokasa for contributing to the guidelines. So yes, Pakistan and specifically Punjab uh, uh, did make guidelines and we tried to implement. This is so I endorse those, uh, those were the evidence-based aspect. I, I don't think you will see in those guidelines the use of uh, uh, certain medicines uh, that we have mentioned. I don't want to repeat their names, but I, I don't see if those are there, right? Yeah, they're not there. <laughs> so we do not want to repeat their names because the young one um, sharing of experience I'd like uh, you to make is you talked about the safety of staff and the use of telemedicine. Were you using tele-ICU services as well at PKLI? Uh, Madam, I have one thing that I mentioned in Pakistan, where there is a teacher and where there is a teacher, that is the telemedicine. Ka under and it is such an undiscovered aspect that the government and the non-governmental uh, organization should look into it because this is untapped part of it that the right frame of mind should look into it and I think the youth the way they use <coughs> smartphones they are thousands of years ahead of us uh, I can tell you their processor RAM is phenomenal so I think the new whoever is going to make uh, health policies the Telemedicine is an integral part of it. And you can see in, uh, in Bangladesh and India, they are already ahead. I think we are still in the frame of like 90s or maybe late 80s. I think very important question, rightly asked. I think this is a lot of discussion that requires. I don't think it can be covered just by one line. Thank you so much, sir. And I really pray and wish and request you to stay back if you could. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
perspective. The outcome of major of surgery and neurosurgery is one of the major global burdens of disease in the world. And if you look at the WHO data, the outcome of major surgeries, like the outcome of major surgeries, the incidence of complications, major complications leading to death, uh, is something like 0.4-0.8% in higher income countries, and it rises to about 5-10% to in low and middle income countries. So, this part of the world, we have a uh, less uh, kind of disastrous outcomes because we are not focusing on quality. Whatever health care we give, and for that, I so the Lancet Commission uh, is one of those uh, uh, very. So Lancet Commission has looked into this uh, issue of quality in healthcare, and what they go on and say is that something like eight million lives and uh, around six six trillion dollars US dollars are wasted because of poor care quality healthcare. So it's not just an um, issue of resources, it's the question the issue of proper utilization of healthcare resources. So what they have recommended is to that healthcare system should have some kind of measures of quality and implement some measures of quality. And those measures they recommend should be based on multiple criteria and they include the, sorry, the indices they suggest is healthcare outcomes. So you should be looking at outcomes, and one of the outcomes I just mentioned, 0.4 to 0.8 percent say rise healthcare, 10 percent per point of the surgery, the research in complication rate they have. So, if you look at the context, you will have to measure outcomes and talk about the outcomes. What is the confidence of the system? This is what you have to suggest that you have to measure the coverage. Not just what you have to do with the service, but what you have to do with the system. The competence of the system. So, is it competent? Is it providing what you need to be providing? And the user experience. So, as you would say, and what Dr. Fessel uh, said a little while earlier, because I've been on that side of things, where I looked at healthcare delivery from the public perspective, as part of that regulatory framework, I was looking at the public side of things. So here you can see it. Instead of looking inwards, we have to look at what we are delivering and how people is, are perceiving what you are delivering. And this is the multiple people who have proposed and proposed and layers proposed. And so what they suggest is that these systems should be equitable, which means at least everyone should have equal access to the resources. They should be resilient. This is not that you have delivered, you have delivered, you have delivered, you have delivered. Our performance in COVID, or uske baad to deteriorate and it should be efficient. Dollar value hone chahiye. Also, every rupee spent, you should get value for that rupee. It's not just like okay, humne, uh, we need more resources, but how efficiently we are spending those resources. So, ye kuch hai indicators jinko hume dekhna hoga when we are measuring quality. So, and there's certain criteria. Very hone chahiye. They should be measuring what they're supposed to measure. It means that if, an, if there is a better performance in indicator, that really is better performance on patient's website. Results only on the Feasible on the They can be implemented. Here you have the most ambitious thing, and uh, you end up getting not getting there. So those indicators need to be feasible. Uh, they should discriminate between what is good and what is not so good, and they can be uh, actionable. So based on that, uh, when you look at quality, high school quality indicators, there have been various ways of looking at them, there have been various 
publications, they've been various uh, meta-analysis where they've, they've never it out. Started off with something like 90 quality indicators, went on different uh, publications, suggest different set of indicators to measure quality in the ICU. So, but most of them were coming from the first world. So, high income countries, they were not feasible, they were not measurable at times. So, there's this group that was formed to look at the quality indicators for lower and middle income countries. And following the Lancet Commission framework, they looked at two areas, three areas. The foundation, which means what are the essential foundation of that ICU facility, which means the structure, the manpower, the resources, and everything. So in foundation, they looked at the patient-nurse ratio, intensive staffing to bed ratio. So do you have a dedicated intensive? How many intensives do you have uh, for the number of patients per patient? Level of experience of ICU staff. ICU night coverage, and that's important because everybody loves to be, become a consultant during the day. But it's the night time when really the, the problem, and most of the problems as you see in the ICU have occurred at night hours because that's the most difficult shift. Uh, then they also look at the process. So processes, they suggested duration of mechanical ventilation, incidence of nos uh, nosocomial bloodstream infections, Pressure injury, incidence of ICU acquired drug resistant organisms. So these are those measures that they are suggesting. And then the quality indicators, the quality impacts, which means what impact are they? That these are the outcomes. So they look at the structure, the process of care, and the outcomes. And outcomes, number of patients discharged by ICU due to lack of parts. And this was interesting because uh, this indicator was not present in any one of the previous studies uh, published. And, and, but this was unique to lower and middle income countries, so they included this. Incidence of nosocomial bloodstream infections, of course, once again, the quality metrics, ICU length of stay, and risk adjusted ICU mortality. If I have any ICU mortality published by Mika, if I have any published by Mika, if I have any data on ICU mortality, then I have any patients with my sick patients. And that happens in some of those fancy ICUs. So you need to have a uniform criteria to measure, a score to measure what was the level, how sick the patient was at the time of admission, so that you compare your apples with other person's apples and do not compare apples with oranges. So, So, what do we do with them? And these indicators have been suggested as a model, as a pilot. Now, what they are proposing is, So, I was thinking about it. How do you impact them? So, one time, the entire process started, there was a group of people got together and they started looking, mapping the ICU facilities in uh, in Pakistan. It was a long task. It was difficult to get generate data. But then we have a data push media. We could manage to find something like we have ICU beds daily, we have daily ICU beds in Pakistan, we have units in what is the nurse ratio, what is the medical ratio, what is the facility there. So we had, we managed to get this data. And then, uh, with the help of Oxford Trust, a, a, uh, a ICU registry bank. So there are now something like 53 participating ICU uh, hospitals and 70 something participating ICUs who are regularly uh, participating uh, Contributing uh, data to this, uh, uh, this, this registry, and I'll come to that in a while. So, when you lo look at the uh, implementing these, what are the barriers? Pakistan mein ICU quality mein wo kaise hum ensure nahi kyu kar pa rahe? Subsequent problem is the business model. Private sector ICU, the patient comes. The patient gets care, the patient pays, the patient goes back. Since the patient is paid, 
सो ईच पेशेंट इज ट्रीटेड एज एन एंटिटी जिंदा बच के बड़ी खुशी चले गए अल्लाह की मर्जी सो यू आर नॉट लुकिंग एट द डेटा यू आर नॉट लुकिंग एट द ट्रेंड्स एंड यू आर नॉट इवन कैलकुलेटिंग द पर पेशेंट कॉस्ट टेकिंग ऑल द वेरिएबल्स इनटू अकाउंट सो देयर नो देयर नो नो क्वेश्चन ऑफ एन ऑडिट और अकाउंटेबिलिटी ऑन योर परफॉर्मेंस similar for public sector they throw the budget at you you give them some numbers there is no proper audited accounted or uniform system of this so you do not have these indicators against which you can measure your performance so and the government doesn't really ask for it so aapko kya zarurat hai karne ki jab to puch hi liya so how to maintain the culture once again i'm sorry to say hierarchies bade ko koi baat nahi kar sakta aapko question kar sakta hai and we do not have an objective oversight which means there is no regulator asking us these questions kon <laughs> implement karega ek to of course the healthcare workers the healthcare staff hamare apne hamare apne institutions but more important than that healthcare delivery now is a provincial subject provinces start the provinces ne healthcare commissions bana di तो हेल्थ केयर कमीशन का काम है कि वो ये काम करें तो व्हाट वी डेट वो टाइम ऑफ प्रोग्राम टाइम पर के हम ये देखें तो सही कि हेल्थ केयर कमीशन ने कोई तरह क्वालिटी इंडिकेटर्स बनाए हैं आईसीयू तो सबसे पहले आई वेंट टू पंजाब हेल्थ केयर कमीशन मैंने को ने कहा कि डू यू हैव एनी हेल्थ केयर आईसीयू क्वालिटी इंडिकेटर्स फॉर कारण बट देयर इज अ ड्राफ्ट अंडर कंसीडरेशन सो देयर इज अ ड्राफ्ट एंड अ कंसीडरेशन दे वर वेरी जेनरस दे हैव शेयर्ड इट विद मी This was more to do with the administrative setup and availability of staff and everything. No mention of processes, no mention of outcomes. It was just more like a structure. So, pehla wala part jo tha wala. So, look at Sindh Health Care Commission, and that is their total standards of care. Their Sindh Health Care Commission. Because it was a little more better. They are more comprehensive, but they look at the care processes. outcome nahi karte they move from the structure to they are they are measuring processes as well so the document is a little more elaborate but nothing specific to icu so what's the way forward up we have those measures we have this registry what we need to do is go and uh, we we went on and we uh, submitted this document shared this document with the jab health commission last and then okay we have this set of indicators why don't we pilot them and they said they are very excited but nothing has happened so far like all good things i am trying to advocate and i would try to go other others to join hand in mobilizing them and asking them creating some kind of pressure that the artists book are and when we once we have kind of an agreement that these are the quality indicators that need to be measured we can use i the price registry data to actually measure them we can they so those indicators have been now been incorporated in price registry data so we can at least have the, but interesting baat aap ko bataun ke sabse zyada can you make a guess charo provinces mein se sabse zyada icu bed kaun se province mein ke paas hai कितने लोग समझते हैं पंजाब के पास है कितने लोग समझते हैं केपी के पास के पास है कितने लोग समझते हैं सिंध के पास है सिंध के पास सबसे ज्यादा है थैंक यू वेरी मच
go to the IT room otherwise, uh, you're not that depressed. But the moment you enter into an IT room and you have OM, the first thought that comes to you is, and uh, that uh, probably this is the better part of your life, and, and you're not going to walk out of this. This is the first feeling, whether you're very good, you're very stubborn, you're very uh, stout, but this, this, this emotion does come into your mind. Generally, a patient of significant, of significant COVID would have this, not a lot of positive thinking. I, as chairman of CIA, had put upon myself an additional responsibility of monitoring and auditing deaths. So I was quite familiar with the path of mild COVID to moderate COVID to ICU and then move upstairs. So uh, that was the background, and this is the background in which I am going to tell you my experience. The usual story was obviously uh, the same. The mere fact that I'm speaking to you right here, and I'm not, my spirit is not attending a condolence meeting, the mere fact tells you that they did a good work on me. They saved me from a, an area certain day. Now the problem is that this is sort of a review of an activity. The review can be of two types. It can be a simple review, and it can be a critique. A critique is by an expert. A review is by somebody related to the field. So I fall somewhere in between. I'm not a lay person since I was a doctor, but I'm not an expert on intensive care. So my observations are going to fall in between, and they'll be more closer to reality, and they'll be more closer to what a patient feels like while in the ICU in this country. So uh, uh, I'm not going to acknowledge again and again, not, not going to praise anybody, because I think that's a poison for an academic activity. The academic activity has to have at its center the ability to find flaws, the ability to find the room where we can improve. So with, 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 with uh, uh, apologies to the uh, PKI people who saved me, I'm going to be a little critical and I'm going to point out what we can improve for future better performance. Then that should be taken in that light. It's, it's no criticism in, 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 the, in the negative sense. So this I've already said that I'm not a critique, I'm not a reviewer, I'm just a patient and I'm going to narrate my story, but I want the story to be meaningful, not just a narration and saying that they were good. My experience had, a, had an evolution. It, it, I was there for a month, uh, and for a month, uh, for a COVID patient to be in an ICU means something very, very serious. Uh, it had a gradual evolution. In, in the one month stay, admission to discharge home, and my feelings and my reactions were different and they were changing the time. Admission was seamless, it was superb. And I just went there and there was somebody waiting for me and they took me in uh, and they gave me a space in the isolation of the quarantine area. The nurse, now this is where the things started going a little, a little different than my expectation. I was given a room, I was alone there. A male nurse would come every four hours with a pulse oximeter in his hand, take my oxygen saturation, that made me a little nervous. Luckily my phone was still working, I called my driver and I said, bring me two pulse oximeters. He called back, but they were very different I said, go around wherever you go, bring me two pulse oximeters. And he brought me two pulse oximeters. And that I think was a very wise thing, because you know in a minute what happened. So I had these two personal, my initial uh, oxygenation was 95% at 2 liters, and then it went to 4 liters. And by then I got my pulse oximeter. And now I wasn't dependent on the nurse coming every 3 or 4 hours and looking at my health. This was the first thing that for quarantine also, we need to in future look at this, that you can't depend on a nurse coming every three to four hours in a sick patient. So, I understand, they were so overworked, they had to uh, stagger their patients, and they had to have categories. But I think this is something that we're going to learn for future, that you can't really uh, do that. And, and a change in might will also be uh, monitored by the nurse at three to four hours later. So I felt a little uncomfortable. And I asked the nurse to convey to the doctor on duty that I have a little uh, strange feeling and uh, my rate, rate of breathing has increased. So he said, don't worry, this happens very frequently. But he was a very, very beautiful person. He went down, went to the doctor's room, and we had rounds on, on a tap. So the doctor, uh, I had operated on her son. So she called me and she talked to me on the tap and she said, sir, are you all right? I said, I'm all right, but I'm not comfortable. And uh, my saturation then dropped to 87 when I went to the toilet. And I called back the nurse and I said, I, I can't afford to walk. And you see, they said immediately that in future you do not go to the washroom without oxygen. But this is the second thing that I noticed should not have happened. They communicated 
the nurse communicated to the doctor, the doctor communicated to the nurse, the nurse came back to me with, a, with an oxygen cylinder, and now this is the problem. The action was that I needed ambulatory oxygen, perfect, very good, you see. The process was that they delivered it to me, but this was the problem. This was the problem. There should have been a result in improved saturation and monitoring still periodic. It remains still periodic. So that wasn't a good intervention. This should have uh, made somebody think that I'm not a patient who still needs periodic monitoring. And I should have moved to some better place. The other thing is that this was the problem. They wanted me to carry the cylinder to the bathroom every time I went there. Now that can't be imagined. A person who has an 87% oxygen saturation, you want him to carry that I was actually doing it. My oxygen would drop to 90, to 88, not 87, so I was carrying the oxygen cylinder every time, and I was treated as a baby. So that, that has to be kept in mind. I was chairman of the CI then, and they were all waiting for me to come to the hospital. Once I was diagnosed as COVID. So this is, these are the things that we, I think, need to improve if we have to work towards the system. The system would have sorted out this earlier that I can't ask this man to carry an oxygen cylinder with him to the washroom. I was a nobody, even then the receipt should have been saved. So the action was alright, the process was alright, but the way it was executed wasn't. So that's what I, my, my point is, that we need to really interpret our results. We need, to, we need to look at the processes more critically, not being focused uh, or predetermined the results. Now the same thing was at, at, at 5 p.m., a very well dressed, very well behaved boy came into my room and left a, 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 a pack of food nicely wrapped in cling wrap. I was breathing then at about 38 per minute. Now the, 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 the process was good, the action was good that the patient would require food. The, the, the action was good, they provided me the food. The process was good, they delivered it there. What about how would I eat it? A man breathing at 37 or 38 breaths per minute, alone in the room, Oxygen dropping to 87, how would he eat it? So I never touched it. I never looked at it. And, and they, they gave me a bottle of water already. That was very good. So I think what we need to do is look at the things by piecemeal processes. And that is the road to success. We have to improve and there's no way that we can remain static. There's no way that we can not improve. We can improve and I have some suggestions at the end because I wanted this to be meaningful. I didn't want this to be a story alone. So uh, I'll make it a little meaningful. I call the consultant that I think I'm going into a side by storm. This was Javed. Javed ka mere pasna bata. Javed ko maine call kiya. Maine kaha I think I'm going to a, into a side. He said yes, I agree, sir. I think you're going into a side by storm. I said but then do something. I mean, there's there's going to be something done now rather than wait for some decision. So uh, uh, they, he said that we need to send IL6 samples and everything and all that. No, that was another shock. I was in the best ICU of the country. But to my astonishment, they couldn't do an IL-6. They wanted me to coordinate with the Chukai lab and ask somebody to make the payment to the Chukai lab and, and then the Chukai wala would come and pick myself. Now, I was alone. I had my wife in the car and I had my driver in the car, so I called them and they called and since Chukai was a very close family friend, so she called Chukai directly and then he said, Bhabi, I'll figure out and then we'll take care of that. So that's another point. If we have to go into a system, we have to look into it. I am ready to pay. Everybody would be ready to pay. But you can't expect me to coordinate with your client. I have to get my sample. So that was the second point. This is for future learning. I don't want this to be a story alone. So then I was breathing at, at 37 and Mubeen, another IT who, uh, doctor who is the anesthetist there, was, 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 was used to work with me at the farm. And he just came in and he said, hey, you're not well. I said, yes, I know I'm not well. He said, let me create an ICU room for you. So he created, that's what probably was the most important point in time that led to my probably survival. He shifted, he made sure that I'm shifted to the IC room by 10 p.m. And that's where I met Paul and I met Ramon. And the story from there on was absolutely perfect. I had no issue in the ICU except a few things which are not in their domain, but which are in the domain of the patient and they need to be looked at. The ICU treatment wise was perfect. Except that I very clearly remember his father when I had not met him earlier. I had probably met him once, but we were not friends. He was telling his residents that this is rocket run. Can you see those five lines? I didn't know what is a rocket run. And then I looked at it once I got discharged from there. And that, at that moment, my thought was that rocket run would probably mean that I'm going to the outer space very soon. 
Who is going to do that? We are the people who are going to convert this human resource into useful <coughs> resource. So our problem is human resource. Our problem is the block at the thought level. We can't convert the human beings into useful human beings, which are a good resource, human resource. I hate to call humans as resource, but I mean, as it is traditional, I still would use the term. The biggest issue is attitudes. We need a cultural shock. Unless we get this cultural shock, हम हर चीज को formality रखते हैं। हम हर चीज की जिस तरह नमाज में अगर तलाक देना ना फ़ायदे में लोग मुसलमान हैं, उन लोगों उन नमाजियों के लिए तबाही है जो कि नमाज से वाफ़े हैं। तो मुझे समझ नहीं आती कि नमाज भी पढ़ता है, वाफ़े भी है। तो नमाज ये नहीं है जो उठना बैठना है। नमाज का असल मकसद हर बातों का असल ये बदनी बातें जो हैं इनकी एक तरीका कार है या जिसको आप रस्मों रिवाज के अन्य वाले इनकी असलियत है इसी तरह इल्म का भी एक तरीका कार है और एक असलियत है सो अनफॉर्चुनेटली वी मूविंग अवे फ्रॉम द सेंटर ऑफ ऑल दिस एंड वी जस्ट गेटिंग एंटेंगल्ड इनटू दी फॉर्मेलिटीज अनलेस वी डू दैट एटीट्यूड के इशू में आपको ये बता देता हूं वेंट टू आर्काइव्स इन इस्लामाबाद व्हिच 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 हैज ऑल ऑफ दीस थिंग्स एंड बट एक्चुअली यू कैन काम किया I saw this photograph at the, at the entrance of the building. Uh, the title of the photograph, uh, unfortunately, won't be released about. Title is Legends of Pakistan. There are 19 people in this photograph. Jinnah is one, and there are 18 others. Team can be become a unknown. So I went into the DG's office and I said, DG, sir, please tell me, will someone's legend be a unknown or something? So why can't you find the names of the three people? He said, Doctor, I'm very happy. You know, I've been talking about this since 1952. So this is the idea, this is the attitude. He should have felt ashamed of it. He should have immediately written to the ministry concerned that we need to do something. This is the attitude, national attitude, this is the attitude, this is the attitude. Unless we change this attitude, this country cannot improve. I seem pessimistic, but I think one has to be a little pessimistic and optimistic accordingly. Optimism is we can get better. Pessimism is not the strength that we have to do. And I think this is the last thing. Or we have the resources, we have the grace, we have to convert them into great things which are useful. And that we can by change the hands. We don't have healthy debates, we don't have constructive arguments, we don't innovate things. We can only import ideas, but we <coughs> innovate the system. Because the systems have to be specific to the environment. We have to have self-respect. This is what the Quran also teaches. And then the profit of We have to be able to do an analysis of the events, just like we are doing it now. And we have to be cost conscious. We have to develop systems which are cost conscious. Pakistan economically is not a growing economic power, and we can't afford to have the uh, 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 sort of uh, can I say, economic freedom that the US has. US key or Cuba key healthcare system to prepare for me. So Cuba delivers healthcare. Almost compared to the U.S. at the cost of one percent of the healthcare of the U.S. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Bilal. Very easy for them, and sometimes it's most difficult for them. So I judge whether it was easy for me or most difficult at the end of the day. Um, I have been uh, <clears throat> given this uh, task to discuss the challenges which were faced by the medical universities during times of COVID, and. Uh, uh, the job has been easy because it started off with the talk of Dr. Asim, Professor Taki, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Faisal Sultan, Professor Binbu Chokat Sahab, and uh, Dr. Iqbal Hussain. They talked about the various experiences, and very interestingly, we did come across the experience of a Covidian as well. So now let's see how my challenge as a healthcare provider was. And during these last two years, for three years now, um, I have had the privilege of being able to serve in, or rather being associated with three, three medical teaching institutes. 
So while is Fatma Dina to uh, King Gabriel Medical University and King Association with uh, University of Health Sciences in way of being involved in their research. So let's see what uh, our challenges were, uh, were as uh, medical teachers and healthcare providers. Uh, this is something, uh, you know, years back, uh, this, somebody knows about this movie? Contagion. My final year uh, class does because uh, uh, we have talked about it. So it was somewhere back in 2014, this movie was created uh, in Hollywood. And I got a rather 212. And I watched this movie around about 2015. I mean, what is the last movie? What is uh, uh, compulsive disorder that, but this is exactly what we saw in 2019 and uh, this is how everything occurred and this is how it started off back in 2020 when we were all wearing masks, initially wearing gloves. I remember uh, the first patient in Punjab came to King Edward Medical University at uh, Mayo Hospital and myself and my teacher, Professor Khalid Sur Bondur Sahab, sir, if you remember, we went inside to see that patient. We were wearing double gowns and a PPE, and um, uh, I was wearing glasses. On top of that, eye shield, and then another shield. And I remember, like, I could not see anything, and I eventually had to take one shield off. So this is how we started. And Alhamdulillah, we have I won't say we have ended, but we are sort of, you know, we have led on to this day, but we are comfortably sitting. So, Alhamdulillah for that. Let's see how the travel went. So, uh, first patient, I remember distinctly, 26th December was when Wuhan announced it. 26th February was when that patient, Salman, was admitted at uh, New Hospital. And then the thing created havoc. And then, uh, if you remember, in March and April, lockdown had to be introduced. And it went up like this. So we had all the ICUs full. I remember Mayo Hospital, there was bed. And then it went on and on and on. And unfortunately, I, uh, I can state uh, my... Uh, uh, family statistics. My family lost 16 patients. And I hope I'm not right, but almost everybody sitting in this hall must have been directly or indirectly been involved with COVID. And uh, Professor Mahmood Chokat Sahib just, uh, you know, uh, shared his uh, experience from which we learned a lot as a COVIDian. So uh, this is what started happening and then, you know, the lockdown had to be reduced, the outdoors had to be closed. So this was, uh, uh, in my limited career of 25 years, the first time <coughs> that we had seen outdoors closed, not due to strikes, but due to something which was uh, uh, because of a healthcare crisis. And uh, same was true for the other, uh, other countries. This is a picture. You must, uh, who remembers this? Yes, New Delhi. This was when uh, uh, they were, it was all over the media. While we were doing a little better, our uh, neighboring country, people would be falling because of lack of oxygen. And then there were these pictures. So this was all over the world. USA, UK. Koi aisi country nahi which was spared. Ye video hai, and it was very shocking. Ye, it was like, when you saw the though it's not, uh, the sound says, ka koi talo nahi. Let me just see. Uh, it's a lady. So, uh, this was, uh, ye kya hai, kisi ko kata? Ye kya hai, kisi ko kata? Ye so this is India and this is cremation and look at the number of, uh, you know, uh, dead bodies and the uh, story was never ending. 
And then we lost so many. We lost so many. We lost more than 250. And uh, during one year, during 2020, uh, March, this uh, does not include the pictures of all. And still, we were losing patients, we were losing doctors, or yet a crisis COVID If you remember, people would not believe that COVID be the And they were like, what do you you What do you What do you And they would not listen to you. And these, uh, when some of the who would remember this job that was presented by Dr. Sethi, who was working on the statistics, that this is how the numbers were increasing, progressively and progressively. And they uh, were up and we are reaching the end of the year 2021. And in this year, Professor Mahmoud Shaukat said that he didn't do the work. But sir, with your uh, permission, I will do a little bit of the work. WHO has done it. They said that Pakistan is amongst the top five, seven countries in the world. And they actually, what I read, it was for a purpose. Um, it was for other countries to know that why Pakistan behaved better. And this is something very interesting that he said. This was a dialogue which we So basically, he said that Pakistan is the most top seven countries, number one. Number two, he said that Pakistan is behaving better because they are good in the process of vaccination delivery because they have already worked on polio vaccination. And the third thing is, that they, what he said was that Pakistanis are malleable to change. So they are not rigid in their policies. So these are the three factors he identified when he declared Pakistan as the seventh most country getting better. So the crime in the United States have left health experts back as they are trying to look at the United States and the Pakistani people have been exposed in the numbers of cases. Or ye in India he report uh, and in this in this report they again appreciated that Pakistan has done better. <coughs> so what did we learn? Ye kya hai? Cloud hai? and the cloud has what type of a lining? Silver lining. Or silver lining ka kya matlab hota hai? So where COVID taught us uh, many hard facts, COVID taught us many things which we need to further implement upon. Thank you, sir. <laughs> sir is my teacher, but sir is my teacher, Mona Lisa. Mona Lisa ki jo picture hai, it's a pretty interesting fact. Hai. Uh, look very carefully. Uh, when you look in the center of the picture, you find Mona Lisa smiling less. The phobia vision of you know, Mona Lisa ki smile less. Hoti hai. Look on the picture on the left. The Mona Lisa ki jo smile hai, aapko zyada lagti, lagti chahi as you move at the broader perspective. Ek koi feel kar? Yes. So, Mona Lisa focus on the face center and then move to the periphery. If you go to the periphery, your peripheral vision may Mona Lisa ki smile zyada pink hoti. The purpose is that we have central vision, your foreign focus, where we focus on that, we should look at a broader perspective as well. So this is what I think Professor Mehmood Shaukat meant when he said that sirf tarif nahi, what did we do wrong? So in the right side of it, a green tick mark hai, which is saying what we did right. Or left side of it, what we did wrong. 
اور درمیان میں کیا نظر آئے تو ایک ہیڈ اینڈ نیک ہے اور ہیڈ اینڈ نیک is actually made by many many people so there are many brains who worked upon this and uh, to find, to make we were talking about the guidelines and policies so let's see what were the right things so up to preceding slides were <coughs> two categories so in on one you would see the green tick mark which tells us what we did right and then there is the red cross what we did wrong so number one we made policies and uh, immediately NCOC was created. We just had Dr. Faisal Sultan with us. He was the chief advisor for health for the prime minister at that time. And he had a pivotal role in that the NCOC actually uh, drained input from all over the countries, from expertise and from policy makers and from philanthropists to contribute to what were the guidelines and were what were the SOPs which you received in form of paper in the newspaper. Then we had, we talked about Corona Expert Advisory Group. But how many of you have said that you have to say that you have to say that you have to say that. So, I have to say that you have to say that, but salutes to you that regular meetings every week contributing on to analyzing the morbidity, mortality, policy, change in guidelines, so long and so forth. Every week, we have to keep it, every day. Yes, every day. We have to keep it, every day. And so, highly commendable. And these were the areas which were worked upon when we talked about policy. So, now we were talking about public cooking. Here is the show, testing, research, lockdowns, e-dai, ashura aya. Um, distance from sick people, quarantine, awareness, SOPs, ICUs, so there were so many things, so many domains. And then I teach them and teach them how to start with you, the medical education. So our loan, the undergraduates, our loan, the postgraduates, that is another aspect of this procedure that is not within the domain of NCOC and COVID. Yes, all of these things are done. Now let's see. अब क्या किया जाए? So अब ये COVID की ये उसको क्या कौन सा मारते? Green के red, green. COVID taught us how to communicate. This picture is of belt, belt of premium, belt and road international medical education association. And uh, we were privileged to have Professor Khalid Masood Gondal represent Pakistan and be the chair for the, uh, the session which Premia held. And uh, we were able to exchange our experiences because uh, King Edward, and you can see um, other institutes, Professor um, Amir Zaman was representing uh, Fatma Jinnah at that time. We were able to share the experience of uh, uh, COVID with world over and this was something that COVID taught us, these webinars and international seminars. And there were so many, so many women to smear it all these achievements of limitation of time. They think there were so many. I would like to, what I added was, can anybody identify it? Yeah, it's Dr. Asif Tufail sitting on the chair. Dr. Tufail, Dr. Farah, Kemka, UK, all the people are there, mashallah. Yes, sir. Atar Saeed Saab ne, Mr. Khan ne, Aapna Ho Ki Awa Tha. And so these were regular meetings through we were holding with the ICU of, with Dr. Asif Tufail heading the ICUs of UK and us at medical universities in Pakistan. And sir, you would remember, we were holding these meetings every week on Saturday. And the meetings were not simply presentations. We were discussing cases. And the, how much I personally learned over those two years, over those discussions, it was wonderful. Um, everybody was, this was a new disease, everybody was learning anew. And uh, so much sharing of information over such a short period of time, absolutely free of cost, 
was amazing. And I'm very grateful to, you know, Kenka UK. Uh, I can't see Dr. Adhar, uh, Adhar uh, he must be in some other uh, session. But Dr. Adhar, Dr. Asif Tufel, and uh, there was this, uh, uh, we had this uh, ICU at the... Dr. Hafiz. Yeah, Dr. So, and Dr. Uh, uh, Nadeem Sajab, he's a microbiologist. So they were, it was a multi, you know, disciplinary sort of discussion and similar panel from our side. You can see um, another, uh, this is Tenka UK COVID-19 World Symposium. And you can see uh, Dr. Faisal Sultan and Dr. Abed and Dr. Asif Patel, uh, uh, Vice Chancellor. And then, so there was a lot of discussion and a lot of learning and these are open to the undergraduates, open to the postgraduates, and there were multiple webinars of various domains. This is a very interesting webinar and I, it's interesting because I was having COVID at that time and I was on quarantine and uh, we uh, decided to have this webinar and uh, we had uh, uh, Professor Yasmin Rashid as the chair and we talked about policies and you can see we had representatives from Middle East, from USA, from UK, uh, Dr. Faisal Sultan from our local institute and uh, this was another very, a very important and interesting and fascinating uh, webinar and there were multiple training sessions of this sort of discussion. So I won't go into the further into further details of this, and then I won't go into details of this as well because they have been discussed wonderfully. The use of non-invasive, and here I would pay tribute to Dr. Salman Ayaz, who was one of the pioneers in starting non-invasive uh, technique for ventilation in COVID patients, and he discussed in this uh, research how it has been. So uh, I'm uh, in this picture. We are trying to hide the identity of the patient, but uh, this has been discussed, so I won't need to go, go into the details. Fatma Jena Medical University played its role, as always in COVID, in way that it was the only institute which, which was offering services for uh, pregnant ladies, and uh, your institute offered services to more than one thousand people in the uh, uh, inpatient and God knows how many in the outpatient and the uh, ERs. And uh, so, so a huge applause to the team of gynecologists and our, uh, senior uh, gynecologists at this institute. And then Dr. Iqbal Hussain has left, I think. This is where this um, idea of telemedicine was brought in when COVID struck in, um, the idea was triggered by the then governor of the job, Chaudhry Muhammad Sarver. And at uh, the institute where I was working, King Edward, Professor Khalid Masood Gondal was the vice chancellor. And he instituted the idea of not only, only offering tele corona services, but because the outdoors were all closed, extending on these services to other uh, uh, outdoors, medicine, surgery, gynae, uh, pediatrics, very, very importantly, psychiatry. We were talking about uh, ICU psychosis. People were in a lot of stress. Their relatives were in such a uh, stress. The doctors were in so much stress. And they usually would not like to reveal their identity. So that this was, uh, I think, the first, actually, the first department which got involved in telemedicine at King Edward when uh, there was so much stress, um, uh, Professor Khalid Sukhmonda requested the professor of psychiatry at King and they uh, created the department of uh, the counter for psychiatry and uh, there was a huge, um, uh, uh, it was a very busy uh, counter at that time initially. And this is how Fatma Dina started at the same time you can see your very, very favorite teachers, Professor Andaleed sitting on the counter, Dr. Afaq sitting on the counter. A huge applause for our teachers and partners in our medical university. And uh, I think uh, this was how it started. And then it laid on this. Rasta Kulta Jata When Dengi struck in, we started over with Dengi. Floods came here, we started, but it was 
not much a, much of a success story because floods me jaha floods hai waha internet facility ka problem tha so that was something but we did try to extend our service but then he gets and so so we learned a lot from that and inshallah kala uh, as dr ibal mentioned this is a, an area which can be availed a lot if we have more support from doctors like you and from higher authorities inshallah kala we are going to you know further work upon this in pakistan and this is the you know data we would be able to share and then another thing was an icu uh ye pata nahi play hoti hai ki nahi but this is an actually an ic round jo ke maine khaas aur isko fast forward kiya hua hai to let you know that because morning evening like every two or three hours we need it to see the patients so what we did was ke hum patients ko bhi pata hota tha but i could not be physically it's not possible for consultant to be doing that every two or three hours so this is something we used so we used to exchange the videos because my was bahut zyada obviously because of uh, resources and infrastructure we were not able to you know for the improvised like in whatsapp and usne hame bada sikhaya so is tarah ye you can see ki ek ek patient ko doctor sahab liye ja rahe hain usme detail ho gayi hai aaj usse ye dosti mein nahi hai but you know so ek ek patient ki hame pata hai ki ye woh wala patient hai isse ye ab fio to o to hai ye iski saturation hai ye se wipe hai and then इसकी कोई क्लिनिकल प्रॉब्लम है तो देव शेयर सो दिस इज हाउ सो इस तरह हमने बहुत सारा ये दिस इज अ कॉल व्हिच वी रिसीव फ्रॉम चाइना एंड इट इज वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग टू सी के ये जो बच्ची है ना शी इज गाइनी की पीजीआर शी शी सॉ दिस रिपोर्ट एंड दिस इज द कंसल्टेंट फ्रॉम पीडियाट्रिक्स हु वाज सिटिंग ऑन द नेक्स्ट काउंटर और जब उन्होंने ये लैंग्वेज में पढ़ा ना तो उसने कहा कि यार तुम तो वो हो चाइना के ग्रेजुएट हो तो कैन यू रीड दिस आउट एंड ही डिड सो इट वाज नॉट ओनली अ मल्टी डिसिप्लिनरी बट ए मल्टी लिंग्विस्टिक भी एक तरह से हेल्प हो गई कि हम एक दूसरे से कोई पश्तो की कॉल आ रही है तो यू रिक्वेस्ट किसी को पश्तो आती है कि नहीं कोई इस तरह की सो वी वर एबल टू यू नो वर्क टुगेदर एंड द मोस्ट इंपोर्टेंट मैसेज इज दैट वी वर्क टुगेदर एज अ टीम दिस प्रोजेक्ट वाज प्रेजेंटेड इन दुबई एक्सपो बाय आवर वाइस चांसलर and it was like okay the thing is that kitne kitne paise lage to jab unhe batate the ki ye pkr zero mein cost hai that they would not believe us and this is what they highly appreciated and i think we need to appreciate that <laughs> thank you sir for giving this opportunity for the recent tele medicine and uh, because uh, in the previous talk it was just discussed that tele medicine abhi tak aayi nahi pakistan mein so i think they unhe bola they he had to leave but this is why we i focused on this uh, then jab bhi universities ki baat aati hai so health service delivery academics research research is very important ye main aapko sirf ek de rahi hu ke research ek cheez hai jo right mein bhi aati hai aur wrong mein bhi aati hai in the sense that there was a lot of research but still there still more room for it we need to work more on it as it was pointed out by dr asim that we need to work more on producing and publishing the data which we collected and i hope we are able to do that and uh, uh, another success story was the vaccination so alhamdulillah the uh, statistics uh, the most recent statistics are that 62% are fully vaccinated and we can see almost 60% are partially and i hope this data and that was actually where the low vaccination ka puchte the na to kehte the jab tak ye 65 to 70 percent tak low vaccinated or immune nahi ho jate ye nahi rukegi and this is how i probably this was how it played a pivotal role the role of vaccination cannot be underestimated ab aa gaya lag अब लाल वो है जो प्रोटीन है सो डू यू नो वॉट दिस स्टैंड एनीबडी बायो है सर एक्सेलेंट सो वॉट वी लैक वॉज लैक ऑफ बींग एबल टू डेपो ऑफ द बायो है 
and that probably because of later on the first wave keep being coming again, we analyze majority of the people were the uh, healthcare workers and the paramedical staff and the nursing staff of the hospital. So, uski ek waja ye bhi thi that humara biohazard material hai. Uski se it's a long process. I won't go into detail, but this needs to be dealt with. That how we deal with the biohazard at various institutes. <laughs> the second most important lesson we learned and what we lacked are infectious disease specialists and infectious disease institutes. With Dr. Faisal, people like Dr. Faisal Sultan around in Shalakala, I hope we are able to introduce and with people uh, representing the uh, postgraduate institutes, I hope we are able to introduce these specialties at least in the tertiary <coughs> because this is the future, it seems like, uh, it looks like that this is something which we would keep on eating, chai wo kumri ho, chai wo dengi ho, chai wo dengi ho, chai wo hai ho, kuch bhi ho. And the third thing, third law nishan hai, critical. So, uh, critical care specialty needs to be introduced. And this is what you have Professor Mahmoud Shogar did me experience as a COVID patient at the time. That there were things lacking. So, there is an amalgam of services ka, which are called. May I have still to ask him, which I would in the question and answer session. Is sir, when you were uh, you know, enclosed in an ICU, did a psychiatrist or a psychotherapist come and talk to you. So this is something, it's, a, it's just one aspect of the ICU care. So critical care, ICU care, this needs to be further improvised and the policy makers discuss. This is last but not the least lesson. That starting more from the basics, you can do all the things that you can do. But do you have time to do something that you have to do the or believe you COVID may people started because we do not want you to remember the wrong drugs. But generally, it uh, education, family physicians may argue that at least they would identify uh, the red signs and refer to the eyes. they were not. So the development, and in this I will give you a congratulations and an announcement that the uh, Department of Family Medicine is going to be established in this university and there has been advertisement of a post called Professorial Post for Family Medicine. So that is the need of the day. Thank you very much. And uh, that's it. Thank you, Dr. Dr. So if there are any questions and answers, you are uh, please raise your hand and ask the question. And we have a discussion. I have been doing this uh, universal healthcare program for about five years. And uh, I have no hesitation in saying I think this was one of the best sessions I have ever attended. And I am very, very thankful to all these speakers. And especially to uh, Professor Van Bush, Dr. Brady. I just wanted to talk to him about this. It is, it is not easy to share your own experience as a patient, it does take courage. And we all learn from our patients. Really. Mm -hmm. We learn more from our patients than we learn by anything else as well. And in his talk, there were many lessons for us to learn, and etc. So my question is to Professor Madhu Shoka that, uh, is there any mechanism here that we get the feedback from the patients uh, for their care? For example, in Western countries, when I see the patient in clinic, uh, as the patient leaves my clinic, they automatically get a text, how was that two cells, uh, the, how you will create from 1 to 5, etc., etc. Is there any mechanism in process or we should develop so that we can learn and start this type of thing here? I think that's very vital, but uh, the real thing is that I think we need to look at things as we are. Once we have the infrastructure for being able to store the information, for being able to question people, because I think my, my main issue is that in, in, in Pakistan, unfortunately, uh, we're flowing, we're swimming with the flowing water. And uh, it gives you mechanisms that can record the, 
the real opinions because you see uh, culturally we are I think uh, there is always a disparity in the uh, placement of the physician and the patient. They have a power of authority and the patient has practically no rights of uh, uh, authority on basically transfer case. So is this Muashre may ye intervention is not aim to hold it, they can stop it if you can protect the patient. If we can have a, an independent mechanism whereby the opinion of the patient can be recorded and without identity, it can be reviewed. And then the important thing is, I have a Kakata Apex Kurti meeting with the CIT with the Chief Minister. So I would always say that when I was in the city, 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 I was in the city. So, what do you need the data for? You need the data to be analyzed, to make inferences, to make policies. And I said, my inference is that Punjab needs an institute of infectious disease. Punjab needs an institute of central disease center. And uh, of public health. So, here yeah, I have 18 times in this meeting. Everybody could praise what a wonderful idea. Many on my own infectious disease hospital or institute of Achha Kibbal from a friend out there. And I presented that to but nothing happened. So, when you have infrastructure capable of handling the situation, you have this fire. Because most of the things will be cooked. Our tragedy is that our tragedy is that we have to have a resource. 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 I have to have in place the mechanism whereby I can assure that the reality is conveyed to me. Then we have to have in place a mechanism whereby we review the things and we make a policy. So this unfortunately is not going to happen, but it is going to happen. So we are pressing it, but it is interesting. In three of these meetings, the board commander was hosted. And one fine morning, a brigadier walks into my office. I didn't have an office, I would just use a room in the secretariat. So he walks into my office and said, Sir, I have been sent by the board commander. And we greatly appreciate it. I have two things. I have to say, Oxygen is going to come out. I have to pay you for 20 rupees. I have to pay you for 20 rupees. I have to pay you for 20 rupees. But we were black. So, my proposal is that this is an institute and in every mega hospital there is an oxygen generation plant. If you are making a chair of the hospital, you will have 50 crores of plant. There are many people who have made a doctor. They have made an institute at the CMH Lahore and they have made an order that every big hospital, every CMH has to have an oxygen generation plant. So, unfortunately, there are many obstacles that we have. The most important thing is that we are talking about, we are talking about, we are talking about, we are talking about, so that the debate starts and then we can probably progress. I am talking about health, about the pathology, about the issues, about the issues, and I am very grateful to the speakers like Professor Sufan, Professor Mahmoud Shafat, and everybody, Professor, from UK, they are there. In fact, Terry Madison, as Professor Bilkey said, we started on 18th March 2020. And this was the reason of uh, the governor's story of Mumbai Central, and that started the law institution. But King Edward was one, where we started with that Terry Corona Health Desk. Then we expanded to the 14 different specialties. And our senior registrar, they remained available initially, but only 4 by 7, then for the data. And then we added like Terry Nutrition and Terry Secretary. Fatma Era Medical University also started at the same time, but uh, King Edward remained on uh, continuity and sustainability, I think, was relatively more, and on Dubai Expo. That telemedicine project was declared as one of the best projects. But that's the question in East Nevada, please. The Americans said this project is the best. So, America, why? You are doing this teleconsultation for the last 10 years. We have started here. So, we have entry RF, PKR 0. Our consultation. That is free of cost. America has either insurance or pay to pay. So in Pakistan, Mashallah, there was a health service because of these heroes who were sitting in this town. We were made at the top post. And this is the policy we made. And this is not something that you have to do with your patients and 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 your patients China से लोग आपको टेलीफोन कर रहे हैं, चाइनीज लैंग्वेज में इन्वेस्टिगेशन भेज रहे हैं, आप ट्रांसलेट कर रहे हैं, एंड वेरी सब बेस्ट वे दे विस्टेड हूँ। 
अब इसी तरीके से जो फाकोइंगा मेडिकल इंडस्ट्री है ये स्टार्टिंग दी टेरी कंसल्टेशन इन डेंगी लेकिन फ्यूचर इस आफ टेरी कंसल्टेशन इन टेरी मेडिसिन इसमें इश्यूज हैं लेकिन जहां तक आप बात करते हैं अवेयरनेस की टेरी मेडिसिन इज द बेस्ट फॉर द अवेयरनेस फॉर प्रिवेंटिंग ये फॉर सेकेंडरी डिजीजेस लाइक डर्मेटोलॉजी आप दिखा दें इलाज करा दें दैट फॉलो ऑफ द पेशेंट देर आर सम डिजीजेस जिसमें पेशेंट को फिजिकली आना पड़ता है but we can guide on tele consultation inshallah future we are going to have establish a full fledged department of tele medicine as patmanjara medical university and we will go we are going to link that department with our shahadat hospital and nizam at the first day and subsequently inshallah to the neighboring district and this is my this is my proposal at india but that the tele medicine department of this trashi case center should be linked with the neighboring डिस्ट्रिक्ट एंड तहसील हेड क्वार्टर हॉस्पिटल ताकि जहाँ पे स्पेशलिस्ट को गाइडेंस की जरूरत हो द सीनियर पीपल दे विल अवेलेबल इन शाला ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री यू विल सी द एक्सटेंशन ऑफ दिस डिपार्टमेंट एट Uh, you are experiencing from UK, US, and from Pakistan. If you look at the data that is available on internet, we see that the number of patients in UK and US are a lot more as compared to Pakistan. But and Pakistan, has, but the number of deaths in Pakistan are very less. The percentage is very less. So, in your experience, that you have seen, how can you say what is the reason that the mortality rate is lower in Pakistan as compared to uh, better healthcare provision or The data is not completely shown, or any other other treatment was initially initiated, initiated with less uh, restriction. What are what are your views on that? Thank you. Uh, there are some unknown unknowns here, which we don't know exactly. But obviously, first point is that those countries are more robust in cases of the data. Obviously, they have a centralized system, and uh, their mortality, especially in UK, really it is almost accurate. As Mr. Deep in first presentation has said it. His mortality rate is up to 20%. Our mortality rate is about 25%. I think the main factor was it was elderly population. You know, um, in the beginning, in the first wave uh, when it came, really almost half of the nursing homes I mean, they wiped out uh, due to the spread of the disease. Obviously, <coughs> as you can see, as your age increases, your mortality increases. Um, the third point. Uh, Is um, I I I really don't know, but I just speculate that uh, one thing during COVID pandemic, which was not emphasized very well, was good ventilation. Really, I mean, we we talked about washing hands, we talked about wearing masks and everything. Good ventilation is very important. And in Pakistan, Alhamdulillah, we have big houses. Usually, generally, our ventilation is good. In Western countries, we live in small houses. Ventilation is not that great. The cold environment and temperature, etc. So those factors. So it is not just one thing really. It is a very multifactorial uh, thing. And obviously, um, there are things. I mean, obviously, when it comes to pandemic, we all have to learn from each other. And you have seen example from Professor Burki's uh, uh, slides that. Uh, We collaborated with each other. Really, we learned from you uh, a lot uh, uh, during the that collaboration, Professor Khalid Masood on the left, Professor Bhagirath. We were really thankful to them to 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 collaborate with us so that we can see. There were many many things which you you guys were doing very well. For example, in the beginning, we in UK we were not good with PPE. Uh, you were very good. So so there are multiple factors and not not one. Thank you. Thank you. So Anna wants to ask. Sorry, uh, I'm Dr. Mohan Nagar. Uh, in uh, uh, our healthcare system now, we are uh, uh, having patients with multi-system involvements, and uh, we need coordinated care and integrated care. 
and uh, but in Pakistan, most of the care, especially taking over and giving over, handing over, is uh, not that robust. Uh, so the care becomes fragmented. Everybody puts his her own or her own effort very uh, diligently, but the coordination is not that good. So uh, how is this coordination maintained? UK and what Pakistani government is uh, uh, going to do uh, in uh, our hospitals to improve the coordination? We, we, we go on just paper and pen, write calls, somebody receives calls, doesn't receive calls, somebody hands over, somebody doesn't take over. So how, how this should, uh, this problem should be taken over? Thank you. Yeah. Um, obviously we are uh, talking about totally uh, different systems here. As you know, during COVID uh, pandemic, we work in NHS. There, obviously, people were getting paid, uh, but uh, many surgeries were cancelled. Um, uh, and can you imagine one of the thoracic surgeons, for example, there was a shortage of ITU nurses. So thoracic surgeries were not happening. In one area, Middlesbrough, one of the thoracic surgeons, he trained himself to be a nurse. So he worked there on nursing ship. So that was the level of collaboration in those uh, hospitals. And believe me, some of the some of the <coughs> physicians who were not directly involved, they even mocked the clothes, making the clothes. So so this this is the type of collaboration in our hospital we developed a basis program uh, which were adopted nationally in the UK. So what was that? What was that? I'm just giving you one simple example. So let's say I'm going to our round. I go and see the patient. Okay. I will take the vitals of the patient. I will check saturation, I will check blood pressure, everything myself. Usually this is done by nurses or healthcare assistants. I will ask the patient, do you need anything to eat? If there is a tray there, sitting there, patient has finished eating, I will bring that tray with me outside. We shared our responsibilities with each other. It was, we were all in it together, the tray. It was not like I'm a big consultant, you are a nurse or you are a healthcare assistant. When it comes to specialty, really, I mean, uh, we are really comparing apples with the uh, pears here. Um, the, the people there have brought very coordinated efforts, so you get them and they will come. For example, in ITU care, uh, one role which was adopted was uh, that non it physicians, they will take the job of uh, updating the families. Every day at 3 p.m., non it consultant will call the, uh, call the family or even get the um, uh, FaceTime um, uh, talk with the patient if they're awake, uh, with the family, etc., just to calm them down. Obviously, they are not allowed to come in uh, and uh, they don't know what is happening. So, so we coordinated in many different ways. There are hundreds of examples of that. And when it comes to uh, care, uh, I think everything was available, and we were lucky to have that. I mean, I think Professor Mahmoud can tell better from Pakistan's perspective. Uh, now, this is a very tricky question. You asked something that uh, has a lot of components, but your focus again, unfortunately, uh, not, not not feel offended, but this is my analysis. That our focus has always been on on the government. Now, if you look at your question, what does it have? The content of the question is our moral, ethical responsibilities, our own responsibilities. I mean, where would anything other than morality come in that you sign the thing for doing something and you don't want to do it? So, what are the components we have other than morality? So, I think the reasons for that sort of understanding is bad education. What we call education is not actually education. We just, we just uh, qualify people for getting a job. Education needs to change their thinking. Education needs to change their mind, their way of working. Unfortunately, just for hunting at their environment, we will need So our focus is not on making good human beings. So when you come to medicine, then this becomes a pertinent question. When you go to the traffic inspector, then that becomes a pertinent question. You would traffic control the name industry, or self the name industry. So this is unfortunately a moral degradation. And that makes you tread into areas that apparently are forbidden. But this is where we need to really work on. Because But we flout the law every day, everywhere. So this is morality. 
ये एजुकेशन है ये सेंस ऑफ रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी है ये आएगी जब लोगों का बिहेवियर उनकी सोच उनका एटीट्यूड बदले जो मैंने एटीट्यूड की बात की थी नो दिस so how does the law become important? It's humanity. It's your morality. So these are the things that we have to do in the same way. We have to do a role model. If you are watching all of us, that I don't do this, then you learn something from me. If you are watching all of us, that I haven't seen any of my reason, then you will have the same training. So training is, a lot of training is formal, but much more than formal training is the informal learning that you have on your talks and visits and by looking at the people who are role models. So unfortunately, my society is a teacher who is not here. And unless we have them, there is no answer to the question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Or we have introduced uh, student chairs from this uh, annual conference. Or I request our student chair, Dr. Maria, to please give your views. Uh, being a fellow in internal medicine, what are your views about? And uh, it had been a great privilege learning from the experiences of all of the experts in the field regarding managing pandemic in different institutions in different uh, geographical uh, regions. Uh, as myself working in, I um, I have worked myself in the COVID ICUs. So uh, I think uh, one thing that we need is the more uh, inclusion of ICU care, family medicine, and clinical medicine in the future in our curriculum and in our part of as a training, uh, which has been lacking in the past. Thank you. 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 Productive and wonderful session today. Bilal has handled the session, and then the speakers they talk about the COVID-19. Dr. Asim Siddi, Professor Vikas Shabhi, Bal Sen, Dr. Ashad Taki, Professor Mahmoud Shafat, and Dr. Faisal Sultan. And there are four parallel sessions. In auditorium, we had the session about the critical care. And then we had the parallel session about the nutrition and hearing issue, like uh, auditory and audiological issue. And uh, in the lecture theater, the session was going on in the breast cancer and the cervical cancer, the screening, the awareness, and the preventive care. And similarly, in the medical education department, another important session was going on, occupational health and the role of general practitioner, and how we are going to develop the family medicine system, the referral system in Pakistan. So, I think we are uh, ending up with these four parallel sessions. And in the concluding session, all these four sessions, they are going to be here in the auditorium, where I could see Hamid Adik has already reached. Faisal Sultan is going to join us, join us shortly. Dr. Afi Ahmed Sayyid and Dr. Sarva, they will be there. And in next, uh, 10 to 15 minutes, you can stretch the legs, and there's a poster exhibition going on. Dr. Bilkis is going to tell us what we are going to do in the next 10 minutes, and then we'll get it, we'll get it, get together here again at 11:35 for the concluding session. So over to Professor Bilkis. Thank you, thank you, very much. Thank you uh, so much, sir. And uh, first of all, I'm very, very grateful to the worthy uh, speakers and uh, extremely. Uh, you know, impressed by their talks and they were really all very, very fascinating, fascinating exchange of experiences um, and uh, review of what we did right and what we did wrong and the critique on how we can, you know, improve upon it. So, uh, thank you very much um, and uh, inshallah we'll be heading on towards the next session. The next session is also going to be very interesting. It's on, it's a COVID debate and uh, it would be held in this uh, uh, very uh, hall. Uh, till then, we would be um, requesting all the chairs of the various uh, uh, sessions to kindly join us uh, at the poster competition. Dr. Adha Sayyid is probably in uh, another session. Dr. Adha Sayyid and uh, representing Kemka UK and FJK UK. 
um, has involved Padma Jena Medical University and King Edward Medical University in poster exhibition of various subjects. And uh, uh, our Vice Chancellor was very generous in announcing that the Padma Jena Medical uh, University winners would be getting prizes. So, uh, inshallah, uh, the first prize will be 20,000, the second prize will be 20, and the third will be 10. So, inshallah, uh, 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 probably the students have had a look at the posters. Uh, we would request you to keep seated here. We'll show the, uh, uh, or you can, you know, sort of stretch your legs, as Sir said, and we'll come back and join uh, the auditorium at 11.30. Um, our first expert is our worthy Vice Chancellor, Professor Khaled Masood Gondar. He has been awarded Sambal Nijar and Presidential Title of Performance and recently Lifetime Achievement Award on behalf of Society of Surgeons for his excellent services in the field of surgery. He has worked tirelessly in COVID pandemic with the innovation of telemedicine in King Edward Medical University. Um, our second expert is uh, Dr. Faisal Sultan. He is the CEO and consultant of Digital Medicine and Infectious Disease at Shokan Anna Memorial Cancer Hospital. After the onset of COVID pandemic, Dr. Faisal Sultan was appointed as the Prime Minister Focal Concern on COVID-19 in Pakistan and later as a Special Assistant to the Prime Minister on National Health Services. Our third expert is Dr. Hamid Adik Sarwar. He graduated from King Edward Medical College in 1989 and later did his MS and Executive Masters of Business Administration from TAMS. He is a team leader at Revenue Mobilization, Investment and Trade, which is a project of Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office, United Kingdom. He is also a member of FBR. I welcome you all. For the moderation of this session, we have with us Dr. Arthur Ahmed Said. He is FRCS, Consultant Gastroenterologist at Queen Elizabeth Hospital, United Kingdom. He is a continuous professional development lead and Director of Universal Healthcare, Chemka UK. So, over to Dr.
जस्ट अ शॉर्ट समरी और उसके बाद हम उनसे मजीद सवाल करेंगे दो तीन सवाल मैं करूँगा आर एक से और उसके बाद आपसे दरखास्त है कि आप सब लोग से बात करें खासतौर पर जो मेडिकल स्टूडेंट्स हैं तो ओवर टू फैसल सुल्तान फैसल आप ये बताइए कि कोविड के दौरान आपकी क्या गवर्नमेंट की क्या एक्सपीरियंस था शॉर्ट समरी शॉर्ट समरी ये है बहुत शुक्रिया आप पहले तो शॉर्ट समरी ये है कि कोविड ऑब्वियसली एक ऐसी सिचुएशन थी जिसमें डिसीजन मेकिंग करनी थी फैसले करने थे लेकिन फैसले करने के लिए जो आपको इंफॉर्मेशन नॉलेज चाहिए एक वो कम थी दूसरा वो इवॉल्व कर रही थी और तीसरा उस पे रियल इंफॉर्मेशन के साथ मिस इंफॉर्मेशन भी बहुत सारी शामिल थी इस सारी चीज को टैकल करने के लिए मुझे एक अजीब यूनिक सा मौका मिला और कोइंसिडेंटल और वो था फेडरल गवर्नमेंट के अंदर सर्व करने उसमें जो एक इंटरवेंशन मैं समझता हूँ हम सौ चीजों की बात कर सकते हैं लेकिन मैं समझता हूँ कि जो एक इंटरवेंशन थी एक एक्शन था वो सारी चीजों पर भारी था और हावी था और वो था एक जगह बैठ कर मुशावरत कोऑर्डिनेशन कोऑपरेशन और ब्रेन स्ट्रॉन्ग करने और वो भी डेटा ड्रिवन तो एक जगह जहां बैठे हों और आपके पास कन्वीनिंग पावर हो ये कन्वीनिंग पावर का लफ्स मैंने बहुत पहले सुना था तो चूंकि हमारी ऑडियंस बहुत यंग है मैं कहूँ कन्वीनिंग पावर ये कि जहां आप बैठे हों वहां आप किस किस को बुलाने की काबिलियत रखते हैं जब आप दावत दें तो आपकी दावत कितने लोग और कौन और कितनी जल्दी कबूल करेंगे तो जो एन एक ऐसा फोरम बन गया जहाँ आप लोगों को बुला नहीं सकते थे उनसे डिस्कस भी कर सकते थे आप इसमें बैठ के भी डिस्कस करते थे और हुकूमत की तमाम जो ब्रांचेज हैं शाखे हैं उनको अपने पर्पज के लिए इस्तेमाल कर सकते थे तो अगर एक सबसे फेवरेटल डिसीजन था तो मेरे ख्याल से वो था कि एक कोऑर्डिनेटिंग सेंटर हो जहाँ ये फैसले किए जा सकते तो अगर इसका रुपये दबाव ये है बाकी बारीकी में तो बहुत सारी सबसे पहले तो आई एम वेरी ग्रेटफुल टू प्रियंका यूके डॉक्टर के दौरान डॉक्टर अतर ने वेबिनार पे और प्रैक्टिकली और उसमें गाइडलाइन का बनना और हेल्थ रिफॉर्म्स का डे पार्ट करते आना और आज फातमा जिला मेडिकल यूनिवर्सिटी के चारों हाथ में जिस अंदाज में ये इवेंट और फंक्शन जारी इसके लिए पहले तो मैं कैंपर यूके का और मेरी अलमनाई जो यूके से फातमा जिला मेडिकल यूनिवर्सिटी की आई है उनका मैं शुक्रिया अदा करता बाकी यहाँ का कोविड का सच्ची बात यह है कि अभी फैसिलिटीज दिखा रही थी डब्ल्यू का और उसके वर्ड था कि पाकिस्तान बिहेव अबैर कोविड के दिनों में स्टेटिस्टिक सामने आ रहा था अमेरिका में बात हो रही थी लाखों में कोविड पॉजिटिविटी डेथ की बात वेस्ट में लाखों में चल रही थी लोगों ने कहा कि नहीं शायद वेदर का प्रॉब्लम है इस वजह से वहां लाखों की तरह था और हमारे हजारों की तरह लेकिन जब बॉर्डर क्रॉस करके देखा गया और नेबरिंग कंट्री में भी सिचुएशन हुई थी जो वेस्ट में थी जो इटली में थी जो अमेरिका में थी कैनेडा में थी पाकिस्तान में बाई दी ग्रेस ऑफ अलाउ बाई पाकिस्तान बिहेव वेल एज फेर एज पॉजिटिविटी इज कंसर्न वैक्सीनेशन इज कंसर्न एंड द डेथ रेट इज कंसर्न और उसमें जो डॉक्टर फैसल सुल्तान ने बात की मशावरत एन सी एस ई आई थिंक वी मस्ट गिव क्रेडिट टू द गवर्नमेंट फैसल सुल्तान एंड द प्रोवेंशियल गवर्नमेंट फैसल डॉक्टर यासमी राशद इसके साथ अगली बात मैं ये समझता हूँ इस हाल में तमाम बैठे हुए ये फैकल्टी मेंबर और ये पोस्ट ग्रेजुएट प्रेजिडेंट ये कोविड हीरो हैं आप बिलीव करें कि आपका इंटेंसिव केयर मे होगा और आपका गंगा राम का इंटेंसिव केयर आपको पता है कि ये पेशेंट पॉजिटिव है और ये टफ कर रहा है और आपने इस पेशेंट को ट्रीट करने के बाद देखने के बाद यू आर गोइंग टू सी योर किड्स यू आर गोइंग टू सी योर ओल्ड पेरेंट्स लेकिन इस तमाम के बावजूद नॉट अ सिंगल डॉक्टर रिफ्यूज और ये सारे फ्रंट लाइन हीरो मौजूद रहे वहां पर और ये क्रेडिट इन तमाम को जाता है बात यही नहीं आप शोहदा की बात करें 
आपके यंगस्टर डॉक्टर से लेकर पैरामेडिक्स नर्सेस टू दी एक्सटेंट ऑफ द वाइस चांसलर वी लॉस्ट प्रोफेसर मुस्तफा कुमार पाशा कोविड हीरो तो ये कुर्बानियां दी और पाकिस्तान का कोविड में एक ऐसा नाम आया कि पाकिस्तान बिहेव अबेड एक मेरा थोड़ा सा इस बात पे इख्तलाफ था अभी जब प्रोफेसर बिल्कीस बात कर रही थी कि पाकिस्तान में बेहतर होने की काफी वजूहत है वैक्सीनेशन भी है मेलिएबल होना भी एक है फैसल सुल्तान साहब ने टीम की भी बात की लेकिन मेरे अतर साहब एक और भी है कि पाकिस्तान एक वाहद मुल्क था पूरी दुनिया में जहां मसाजिद को बंद नहीं किया तो सेहत तो सारी अल्लाह की तरफ से है जब मस्जिद में नमाजों का सिलसिला जारी था और दुआएं जारी थी तो अल्लाह का शुक्र है कि पाकिस्तान जैसे जैसे दिन गुजरते गए कोविड में पाकिस्तान का नाम पूरी दुनिया में एक यूनिक कंट्री के तौर पे आता गया और इसमें भी मैं समझता हूं कि हमारे बड़े उनका भी बहुत बड़ा रोल है और प्रैक्टिकली अगर हम देखें तो पाकिस्तानी कौम ने एज ए नेशन बिहेव किया गवर्नमेंट का अपना रोल मीडिया का अपना रोल और फ्रंट लाइन वर्कर डॉक्टर्स का अपना रोल नर्सिस और पैरामेडिक्स का अपना रोल तो ये टीम स्पिरिट थी जिसके साथ ये रिजल्ट आया और कुछ इनोवेशन जो इस मौके पर थी I must mention one thing along with all these things is the concept of tele consultation Chaudhary Sarvesh sahab ne kaha ke tele consultation start kare King Edward mein hum leke aaye 20000 se zyada logon ne istifada kiya 80000 se zyada logon ne calls ki 35 se zyada mubalak the wahan call ki and on Dubai Expo this was declared as one of the best project aur kai ne kai cheeze hum seekhe और फिर आई मस्ट गिव क्रेडिट टू माई एलमनाई हमारी कैंका यूके और हमारी जो फातमा जो ना दे रिमेन इन टच रिसोर्सेज के साथ रिसोर्सेज के साथ अभी तस्करा हो रहा था कि इंटेंसिव केयर में अगर पेशेंट न्यू में मौजूद है तो आसफ तो फैल पूरी टीम के साथ यूके में बैठा हुआ है एक पेशेंट पे डिस्कशन हो रही है तो पाकिस्तान की आवाम के साथ हमारी एलमनाई का भी बहुत बड़ा क्रेडिट था एंड आई एम श्योर जो भी चैलेंज आएगा पाकिस्तान इस पाकिस्तान और पाकिस्तानी अवाम और आखिरी बात करके मैं बात खत्म करता हूं अतर साहब ने बात की है कि मेरी एचकल उसी तरह ही है दो दिन पहले हमारी फातमा जना मेडिकल यूनिवर्सिटी की एलमनाई डॉक्टर फिजा और उनकी टीम हमारी प्रो वाइस चांसलर प्रोफेसर शमसा प्रोफेसर गुरीजा प्रोफेसर जोरा बिल्कि शबीर इमरान असलम ये अतर साहब सारे लोग परसों ट्रेवल करके गए आकाशानी विलेज फाजलपुर तहसील राजनपुर जिला फातमा जिला मेडिकल यूनिवर्सिटी पहली यूनिवर्सिटी जिसने मेडिकल कैंप लगा के इमीडिएट रिलीफ किया और साथ उन्होंने कहा नहीं रिहेबिलिटेशन तो एलमनाई की मदद के साथ 29 घरों को इनाग्रेट कर किया है कम्युनिटी सेंटर और डिस्पेंसरी वहां इनाग्रेट करके और रात जब हम बारह बजे यहां पहुंचे तो चारों हाल में साढ़े बजे सेशन जारी थे आई थिंक दिस इज फातमा जिला दिस इज द स्टूडेंट ऑफ फातमा जिला एंड फातमा जिला ऑर्गेनाइजर बारह बजे आ रहे हैं और ऑर्गेनाइजेशन पहले ही हो चुकी थी अगर साहब आपका भी बहुत शुक्रिया आपने मौका दिया फातमा जना को एक हाईलाइट करने का शेयर करने का और जितने आपके स्पीकर्स थे आई थिंक वेरी वंडरफुल था थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू अब हमें से पूछते हैं कि हमें तो आपकी क्या एक्सपीरियंस और इन्वॉल्वमेंट थी कोविड की पैंडमिक के दौरान बिकॉज 
उस वक्त की गवर्नमेंट ने चूंकि सिंध वॉज नॉट कोऑपरेटिंग विद फेडरल गवर्नमेंट एक हमारी बदकिस्मती है तो आर्मी कैप्टन जनरल सती और जनरल गुराया जो थे अलॉन्ग विद असद उमर साहब और उस वक्त के प्राइम मिनिस्टर ने डिसीजन किया कि लेट इट को ये एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन शुड बी मैनेज बाय असद उमर साहब एंड जनरल सती और वो इतना अच्छा उसका इम्पैक्ट आया कि सब लोग उनकी बात सुन रहे थे और ये कोऑर्डिनेशन जो है इतनी मुश्किल इसकी डिटेल जो भी आगे आएंगी बट इट वॉज वेरी डिफिकल्ट पीछे कोऑर्डिनेशन करना जो सारा सामान मुझे मुहैया होता रहा और दैट इज वाई कि ऑक्सीजन वॉज शॉर्ट इन इंडिया और हमने उनको एक दो तो दफ़ा ऑफर भी की कि हम आपको पेश करते हैं लेकिन इट वॉज नेवर फॉर अ डे भी यहाँ पर शॉर्ट नहीं हुई है नॉर्थन इलाकों से ले कर यहाँ तक ना ऑक्सीजन शॉर्ट हुई है वैक्सीनेशन का भी हमारा जो है मतलब जिस वक्त कहा जाए कि सिक्सटी से ऊपर लोगों को लगे कि उस वक्त जितना मर्जी में सिफारिश कर देता था बैठी गवर्नमेंट में नहीं लिखती थी उससे नीचे वालों को सो क्या क्या कहें मैनी लेसन जो कि इससे लर्न हम कर सकते हैं एंड इट इज़ अ सक्सेस स्टोरी और मेरे ख्याल इसको लिखा जाना चाहिए कि कितनी कामयाबी से पाकिस्तान ने इसको मैनेज किया तो अब हम थोड़े से ज़्यादा तो सवाल मैं पूछूंगा और उसके बाद फैसलानी है and uh, there was uh, you know incredibility and disbelief across the world ke hum log kya kar rahe hain aur kya hamara wahi haal hoga jo ke uh, europe mein logon ka ho raha tha to so what was it that got us through this pandemic that it lightly was it just dumb luck or was it smart policies was it cleverness or was it uh, just a miracle by uh, you know because we are good people Ever discount luck, uh, dumb or smart? <laughs> But I think आपने जो बात कही ना ये बड़ी interesting है और ये दुरुस्त है कि ऐसे हालात में जब सारी दुनिया एक तरफ को point कर रही हो, everybody was screaming Spain, Italy, China, Wuhan, shutdown, lockdown, close down, वगैरह वगैरह. उस सूरत में to go against this tide took something or uh, it took a toll to be to be perfectly honest. Uh, मैं आपको दो एस्पेक्ट से बता देता हूँ एक हुकूमत की पॉलिसी क्या थी और एक मेरी जाति सोच उसके बारे में क्या था की पॉलिसी बड़ी क्लियर थी और वो ये थी कि आपने बैलेंस करना प्राइम मिनिस्टर का ख्याल ये था कि आपने तोजन रखना इसमें कोई शक नहीं कि आपने इंटेंस वो एक्टिविटीज जहाँ इंटेंस इंटरमिक्सिंग हो रही है जहाँ बहुत गुंजान सिचुएशन है ऐसे इस कमरे में शादियाँ थी स्कूल थे दीगर चीजें थी कुछ चीजों को तो आपने मिटिगेट करना मगर इतना नहीं करना कि माशरा स्टैंड स्टिल दे क्योंकि हमारा माशरा ना उस तरह से स्ट्रक्चर्ड है कि लंबा स्टैंड स्टिल बर्दाश्त करे बल्कि आज आपके सामने बात है चाइना का डायमा देखते हुए कि उस किस्म का स्टैंड स्टिल जो था वो कोई इतनी मतलब की बात नहीं लेकिन चूंकि उस वक्त जमाने खल्क थी उसके खिलाफ जाना बहुत मुश्किल था मीडिया अपोजिशन हर किस्म का एक्सपर्ट वर्क टॉपिंग अगेंस्ट इट खालिद आपने जिक्र किया मस्जिदों का हमारे अपने अजीज दोस्त जानने वाले आपको इसमें सिंपली बिकॉज़ 200 बिलियन के मुल्क में आप उस यूनिफॉर्मिटी और स्ट्रिंजेंसी से कैसा चीजें नहीं कर सकते जो मिसाल के तौर पे सिंगापुर में न्यूजीलैंड में आई डोंट नेशन रहे हो भी आई डोंट नेशन में बहुत ज्यादा है इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर बहुत है तो ये थी वो जैसे कहते हैं ना द पाथ टू ट्रेड वाज अ मिडिल पाथ दूसरी बात ये थी कि आपने रिजेक्ट नहीं होना क्योंकि अगर आपने एक दफा फैसला कर लिया कि मैंने यही कर दिया और मैं यही करता हूं One of the beauties of all this was the ability to titrate your response. Usually, data निकल रहा था, evolves हो रहा था, सामने आ रहा था, जैसे जैसे क्या था, वो जिस तरह से बैठ रहा था, तो आपको फिर आसानी हो जाती थी ऐसा करने में। तो किसी rigid position को नहीं लाया। तो मैं इसकी आपको एक मिसाल देता हूँ। Masks का इस्तेमाल। 
फिर उन्होंने उस लॉट ऑफ डिस्कशन होने चाहिए नहीं होने चाहिए कुछ कर रहे हैं N95 है दूसरे कर रहे हैं किस सिचुएशन में करना है प्रो एंटी वो वी वर एक्चुअली टू बी ऑनेस्ट वन ऑफ द थिंग्स दैट वी वर स्लाइटली स्लो ऑन एंड ऑफ स्लाइटली उस मास्क में यूजेज अब मैं जाती तौर पर कंफेस किया मेरा ये ख्याल था कि मास्क यूजेज फ्रॉम द पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू ऑफ प्रोटेक्टिंग योरसेल्फ वाज प्रोबेबली नॉट अ द बेस्ट प्रोटेक्शन बट एज अ पब्लिक हेल्थ इंटरवेंशन इट वाज ग्रेट बिकॉज़ आपने वो क्या करना है रखा हुआ है तो कम से कम आप पार्टियों को को जाकर करते हैं अह एंड देन ऑफ कोर्स इवेंचुअली द व्यू एट दोस्ट सीरीज एवरीबॉडी केम अराउंड टू द मास्क बी अडॉप्ट हो गए तो इसमें भी मूविंग टारगेट था लेकिन चूंकि आपने नजर बॉल पर रखी हुई थी तो वो फिर उसको एडजस्ट करना जो था वो थोड़ा आसान तो मेरा ख्याल है कि कोहेरेंट डिसीजन मेकिंग बेस्ड ऑन डेटा एज एन रिकॉर्ड एंड इन्वॉल्विंग ऑल आर्म्स ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट हालत ने बड़ा अच्छा कहा चाहे प्रोविंस थी चाहे मिनिस्ट्रीज थी अब डॉक्टर साहब बैठे इज नॉट टेकिंग इनफ क्रेडिट मैं आपको बताऊं मैंने शुरू को सुबह के सेशन में इसका जिक्र किया था अगर उस वक्त ऑक्सीजन की कैपेसिटी को एड्रेस ना किया गया होता तो तमाम सब्सिक्वेंट वेव्स में पाकिस्तान में ऑक्सीजन शॉर्ट होती इसके लिए को पता नहीं कितने तबले दिए जाने चाहिए लेकिन हम शायद स्लो भी हैं हम इतने अच्छे नहीं हैं अपने लोगों को रिकॉग्नाइज करने में लेकिन ये बिल्कुल फैक्ट है कि अगर उस वक्त 66 परसेंट ऑक्सीजन का इंक्रीज हमारे सिस्टम में इंजेक्ट ना हुआ होता तो सब्सिक्वेंट हर वेव के अंदर हमें ऑक्सीजन की शॉर्टेज होती है मुझे कैसे पता है क्योंकि हमें सब्सिक्वेंट वेव में जो डेली कंजम्पन इन मिट्रिक टर्म्स है वो हमें पता अब वो उससे ज्यादा है जो हमारी टोटल सप्लाई उसको थी सप्लाई आपकी 500 थी आपने हर दफा उसको ट्रिप किया लेकिन ट्रिप इसलिए नहीं हुआ कि आप आज तक बचा चुके तो ये एक छोटी सी मिसाल थी और हैविंग दैट डेटा फिक्सिंग इट रिस्पॉन्डिंग टू इट एंड इट इज गोइंग और एक ही और जो वैक्सीन जो वैक्सीन शुरू हुई ना तो लोगों ने कहा जी एक तो इमेज क्यों नहीं ली केदार जी वैक्सीन और शुरू में ही जैसे कहते हैं ना एक्सट्रापोलेशन शुरू होगी कि इस रेट के ऊपर तो तुम्हें बारह साल लग जाएंगे वैक्सीन में जाने तो उस उस दिस बिलीफ और नेहलिज्म अंदर भी था अपने सिस्टम में भी था लोगों को समझाना पड़ा कि जब आप अपने घर से चलते हैं तो पहले दो चार मील आपका जो स्पीड होती है वो चंद मील बराबर होती है अंटिल यू हिट दिगर स्पीड फाइंडिंग दैट सीन इन सेलर्स मार्केट वॉज वन द हार्डेस्ट थिंग्स टू डू आप एक चीज के पीछे हैं जिसके पीछे सारी दुनिया है और आपका सिस्टम परचेज का ऐसे है कि वो कहता है कि ये कलम के लोग ऊपर भी नैब के केस पर जाते हैं तो आपका सिस्टम इतना अवर्स था घबराता था डिसीजन मेकिंग से कि ये कैसे खरीदे जबकि ओपे के डिसीजन मेकिंग सारी परचेज की वो सारी ओपे की तो इसलिए इस सारी चीज को भी एक ट्रांसपेरेंट तरीके से करना और ऑक्सीजन लाना देर वॉज स्टेप वन दूसरा और ये सारा क्रेडिट हमारे सिस्टम को जाता है देखें एक दिन डिस्कशन और तो असद उमर से वैसे तो मैं अंदाजा है कि दिन में ढाई लाख वैक्सीन लगानी पड़ेगी आपको एडल्ट्स में हमारे को तो हमने एक वैक्सीन नहीं लगाई थी एडल्ट्स को हमारी तो सारी वैक्सीनेशन होती बच्चों को तो हमारे सिस्टम को आदत ही नहीं थी वैक्सीन लगाने तो बस चुप हुआ कुछ मैंने कहा अच्छा हाँ सही है देखते हैं तो आपको मालूम है कि ऑन पीक डे हमारी वैक्सीन यूज इन पाकिस्तान पीक डे पे टू पॉइंट थ्री मिलियन जहां ढाई लाख को वो हो रहे थे वहां तेईस लाख कितने लगाए अगर इस कमरे के उस कोने में खुदा ना खास्ता आग लग जाए तो आप उधर हो जाएंगे इस सारी बिल्डिंग को पीछे स्प्रिंकलर सिस्टम चला देंगे तो दिस वाज़ दी अदर आर्गुमेंट दैट वी कांस्टेंटली यूज बट एट दैट टाइम यकीन कीजिए द पुश बैक वाज अनबिलीवेबल उस वक्त इस चीज को फैसला करना और इस पे डटे रहना टुक सम गॉड सेड आई थिंक यू हैव टू गिव क्रेडिट टू द प्राइम मिनिस्टर खान के ही वाज़ वेरी क्लियर ऑन हिज विजन एंड स्टक टू इट थैंक यू सर अगर कोई फॉलो अप सवाल है तो आप कर सकते हैं वरना मैं जी आप फरमाइए द यंग लेडी विद क्लासेस सर आई हैव क्वेश्चन रिलेटेड टू बेटे आप बात आरफ कर के फिर क्वेश्चन पूछिए सर अस्सलाम वालेकुम सर आई हैव फॉलो अप फाइनल सर आई हैव अ क्वेश्चन रिलेटेड टू कोविड कोविड की वैक्सीन सर एवरीवन वाज लाइक इट लाइक सम डॉक्टर्स वर लाइक इट फॉर द स्टीवर्ड्स ऑफ देने चाहिए 
and on the hand, like they were like reporting steroids in the time. And some were like, it was actually a win win situation. Yeah, we have to give it. And uh, in the same like situation, they were like, initially, we have to give it, but we have to give it. So, can you just tell me ke, what, what, what is actually like the right and like accurate policy that we have to give it? Again, those situations are there. And this is it's a very good question. Or what? और ये मुश्किल सवाल है इन सम वेज बट इसका जवाब इन इन अदर वेज में आसान भी हो सकता है पहली बात ये है कि जब आप डिसीजन मेकिंग करते हैं दी एब्सेंस ऑफ गुड डेटा और इसके ऊपर पूरी साइंस है पीपल हैव स्टडीड दिस कि जब आपके पास अच्छा डेटा नहीं है और आपके पास वक्त नहीं है उस डेटा को जनरेट करने का तो फिर आप कैसे फैसला करें वो एक तरीका होता है वो एक सिस्टम होता है एक सिचुएशन होती है मुझे नहीं पता कि क्या हो रहा है अगर उस मौके पे मैंने कुछ फैसला करना है सो इन दैट सिचुएशन You take the, the safest path possible. वो अक्सर blunt होती है, मुश्किल होती है, लेकिन वो बक्ती तौर पे आपको protect कर देती है। उसकी classic मिसाल, अगर एक epidemic हो रही है और आपको नहीं पता, तो बक्ती तौर पे system को बक्ती तौर पे shut down करके until you can get your head above it and see what's going on is okay. दूसरी situation वो होती है जहाँ आपके पास hard trial data या empirical data या experimental data या scientific data आ चुका हो। उस वक्त को दूसरा काम करना बेहतर होता है। अब स्टेरॉइड्स का यूज़ इसे क्लासिक एग्जाम। लुक, जब ये डेटा नहीं था, आपने इस्तेमाल किया या ना किया, नो वन कैन फॉर्ड यू। एक दफा जब वो ट्रायल आ गया, व्हिच एक्चुअली कैटेगोरिकली शोड के ऑक्सीजन जिन जो लोग ऑक्सीजन यूज़ कर रहे is unfair and, and un, unscientific and, uh, and not a service. Now, the thing is that people say that we have not known this because you can't detect it. Either you have collected systematically all the things and if you have not done it, then someone has seen it in that trial with a lot of effort, with a lot of effort, with all these parameters, with all the parameters, with all the parameters, with all the parameters, and with all the peer-review process, and you have answered that, brother, those people who have so much severity, that they are hypoxic, वो ऑक्सीजन से बेनिफिट करेंगे, उनको ना रोकना, जरूर देना, और वो जो नहीं हैं, उनको ना देना क्योंकि उनको मुमकिन है नुकसान हो, तो आई थिंक आंसर इस बेहतर है, लोग कैसे रिकवरी ट्रायल करेंगे उसे भी आंसर। सर, सर जो लाइक हम मतलब वी नो के कोर्टिस्ट्रोइड का इसके लिए एंटी फ्लोमिफोरी, लेकिन � so, like, don't you think like, it was not that much of a wise decision? So, again, up again, you hit an, another interesting aspect. Sometimes we construct based on physiology and pathology. We create a pathophysiology mantra that we create. We want to do this. Think knowing all this, we want to do this. If it's like this, then we want to do it. And in that situation, एक एंटीवायरल को इस्तेमाल करना इन द वायरल रेप्लिकेशन फेस मेक सेंस एक एंटी इन्फ्लेमेटरी को इस्तेमाल करना इन द इन्फ्लेमेटरी रिस्पांस फेस मेक सेंस मगर कई दफा दिस इंट्यूटिव आइडियाज गेट डिस्ट्रॉयड बाय द एक्चुअल साइंस ठीक आपके सामने कितनी सरप्राइजेस है ना आईसीयू केयर में पता नहीं कौन से कौन सी चीजें आई हैं जो पिट गई लोगों ने you know, H1, A1 से लेके anti-anti toxin अब आप लोग तो you know in my medical career I've I've seen at least half a dozen things come and go based on experimental evidence. तो जब वो सामने आ जाए तो फिर उसको देखना जरूरी है। As देखें doctors हम artists भी होते हैं हम हमारा एक role है humans as 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 givers of care। बट हमारी जो care है ना हम must always have the background of science in it, if it is there. अगर नहीं है, तो फिर वो जो decision making in the absence of data है, उस सूरत में आपको कुछ जुगाड़ करना पड़ता है। Once you have the information, time for जुगाड़ is finished, time for science class. ये हमने बहुत अहम distinction रखी है। Thank you, I really appreciate your question. बहुत मेहरबान। Thank you very much. अगला सवाल है कालिसा से। मेरा और I'm quite like a comment from Bilkis after that and also Rafael. आप याद होगा खाली साहब के जब ये पीक पे थी पैंडेमिक तो हमने आईटी केयर के बारे में कंबाइन एंटीटी शुरू की है क्रॉस फ्रॉम यूके टू पाकिस्तान और उसमें ऑडियंस के इंटरेस्ट के लिए बताऊं कि हम लोग केस प्रेजेंटेशन करते थे हर हफ्ते 
or a meeting at the experts, specialist, uh, uh, you know, doctors from the UK, including IT physicians, IT physicians, uh, or uh, or Pakistan city. Or we log apna case present karte the, log apna case present karte the, so that we could learn from one another in a situation which was uh, kind of novel and unprecedented and a bit frightening. So, I would like to ask Khalid Sahib and after that, Bilkis and Tufail, what lessons have you learned from that lessons that can be used in service development? Khalid Sahib. Thank you. 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 इसका आई थिंक दिस नो सब्सटिट्यूट और इसमें पाकिस्तान में तो आदि गवर्नमेंट ने ट्रेनिंग स्टार्ट करवा दी थी हमारे चाइनीस लोग भी आए जहां भी लेकिन हमें जो सबसे बड़ा फायदा हुआ वी हैड अ मीटिंग अपनी मीटिंग चल रही लेकिन जब तो फैन साहब और आपने ऑफर की कि इंटेंसिव केयर की फैसिलिटीज हमारे और यूके की आई थिंक देयर देयर वाज लिटिल बिट डिफरेंस यू हैड अ लिटिल बिट एडवांसमेंट लेकिन मॉडर्निटी मॉडर्निटी एक एक ही तरह की जा रही थी अब उसमें टेली कंसल्टेशन के जरिए और इस वेबिनार के जरिए आईसीयू में डॉक्टर मौजूद है एक्सपर्ट मौजूद है प्रोफेसर बिल्कीस मौजूद है जो आते हैं आईसीयू और उस वक्त आपको दिखाया जा रहा है कि दिस इज़ द एक्सट्रीम जस्ट ऑफ़ द पेशेंट ऑक्सीजन और किस किस्म की इसको वेंटिलेशन की जरूरत है, किस किस्म की केयर की जरूरत है, I think that help a lot, a lot. इसमें हमारी मॉडिलिटी और मॉडिलिटी, वो सब्सटेंशियली इसने उसको इफेक्ट किया, रिड्यूस हुई, जिससे जिस वक्त से हमने एक कोलैबोरेटिव सेमिनार शुरू किए कि गवर्नमेंट ने विजयों के भीतर, और कुछ लोग and then we used to tell them that you are having here the international care. The international experts, they are connected and this care is going on in consultation with these international experts. And in the future, I will tell you that this is the way to give back and pay back to your own country, your own other matter. Our FJK alumni or King Edward Medical University alumni, I think such things should be on the permanent list. Thank you, Professor. ब्रिटिश मैनेजमेंट थी उसमें और डिस्कशन वगैरह थी और आपका एक्सपीरियंस ऑब्वियसली आप हेल्थ डिपार्टमेंट थी मेडिसिन में तो आपके तजर्बे में और आपके ख्याल में कोई ऐसी चीजें हैं जो कि आपने और हम लोगों ने दर्ज की जो कि हमारे अस्पतालों में अक्रॉस द बोर्ड फायदे मंद हो सकती हैं थैंक यू सो मच डॉक्टर उन्हें पूरे जैसन की आदत है, वो हर चीज को पूजे में बात करके पेश कर देते हैं। मैं आपको वो ऐसे बता रही हूँ कि एस अ फिजिशियन हमने फील किया। To be very honest, when the first day, you remember the first few sessions were on discussion. We were discussing things, we were discussing SOPs, we were comparing the SOPs and the guidelines, your local guidelines. By that time, NCOC had come up with our local guidelines and we were comparing and we were sort of, you know, coming up with a, an equilibrium. Generally, they were almost the same. I would say they were, Pakistani guidelines were compatible with those uh, followed in UK or US. But when, uh, you know, uh, after the first one month, after three or four sessions, because we used to hold these sessions weekly on Saturday, well, uh, you proposed to us to start presenting cases, and when I conveyed this to my teams, उन्होंने पता पहले क्या कहा लोगों हमारी गलतियां निकालने के अच्छा we thought कि हमारी बहुत सारी गलतियां होंगी और जो कि थी भी लेकिन somehow we felt 
uh, with the understanding and with attention to detail, as I can to point out KFK, but also a you know, bigger vision uh, and an overall view of things. So this is quite remarkable. So well done, Ahmed. So, I think we are about three, uh, two thirds of the way through this uh, discussion time. So now, you can ask your questions. Uh, first, tell your name and then tell your questions. Thank you. Yes, you are very welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, 
uh, to take a C-section of COVID positive patient uh, in our unit. And thank you so much for our professor, uh, Professor Dr. Shirmila Ijaz, because of her support and encouragement uh, we did and after that we all become COVID positive. Uh, uh, means our whole unit become COVID positive because of her support. Uh, we recovered well. So my question is, last time we were run short of a uh, lot of equipments. Uh, we didn't have uh, oxygen masks, oxygen cylinders, ICU care for pregnant patients. So my question is now uh, we are well equipped uh, to deal with any new outbreak or any new um, COVID uh, outbreak or still we are run short of uh, ICU care and oxygen mask and all equipments. Any new policy you guys generated for us to deal with pregnant patients, uh, they are COVID positive. You get slapped twice, shame on me, right? So, I think what you're saying is that pandemic and whatever the challenges were were there, have we learned anything and what have we institutionalized in terms of going forward? I think this is this is what you're trying to say. Because the one institutionalization that was very important and necessary was that I started. Doctor Atul asked me to ask me that one or two minutes of the most important experience was. And I said the most important experience was that. The ability to get together in a room and being able to do mushawarah, consultation, locking your heads together, calling upon people for expertise or or action. This thing was institutionalized for the National Institute of Health. The law was passed. In that, the center for disease control was created. So that every time you have to make an NCOC, and each time you can't go running to the army to do this, you have to do it. The civilian institutions have to be. able to do this themselves. तो एक तो ये institutionalization है। लेकिन उसका नतीजा ये है या हो सकता है कि the kind of innovative and I tell you अभी अभी भी वो उन्होंने हमें detail में बताया है डॉक्टर साहब ने लेकिन आपको एहसास कभी भी शायद इतने शिद्दत से ना हो कि the kind of life saving work that was done just on one domain of oxygen और मैं अभी दूसरे domain से नहीं जाता कभी नहीं जाता। तो आपको हर तरफ Okay, let me put it this way. For each new struggle, for each new challenge, उसकी अपनी dynamics और needs हों। यहाँ oxygen became a need, ठीक है? ICU became a need. Maybe different, खुदा ना खास्ता है ना future pandemic. तो जो चीज़ आपने institutionalize करनी है, वो ये नहीं करनी कि आखरी you do not respond to the last slap using my slap for the experience. You have to be prepared for all sorts of stuff. So therefore, you should have the ability in your system to have learning from data and adjusting and responding to it. So stockpiling, expanding your services, teaching and retooling your staff, making sure that you can actually re-engineer some of your production facilities. Why don't you have to pay for your mask eventually? Because your local industry, including the cotton industry, actually re-adjusted themselves to making enough mass. In the beginning, you remember, you get to know, in the past, the role of the role of the role. So I think that is the institutionalization of things. One thing that we have not done yet, and we have to do it with more than that, is ensuring the connectivity. The data was going from here, from the province. For example, the data was going from here, from Punjab and Sindh, from their own data systems. They were called what are called APIs, इंटरफेसेस हैं तो ब्यूटर के इंटरफेसेस हैं जो एक सिस्टम को दूसरे से बात कराते हैं तो वो उनके जरिए ट्रांसफर होता है सामान्य जीबी वगैरह डायरेक्टली इंपोर्ट करते हैं तो सिस्टम के अंदर तो ये जो इंफॉर्मेशन सिस्टम्स की फ्लो और उसकी बैकबोन को पक्का करना है वो मुझे नहीं मालूम but again, याद रखिए हर नई pandemic अपने साथ एक नया और फर्क challenge लेके आती है और उसके साथ adjust करना और वो तहरीर करना। You have to be agile to make your decision making. So that is the part that needs institutionalization. I hope I've answered you. थोड़ा long minute से जवाब था, but आपने तरीका कार जो करना है उसको institutionalize करना हर दफा वही वाला आने वाला हर दिन चलेगा। इस दफा oxygen थी या mask थे हो सकता है इस दफा challenge कुछ और Professor Sultan has given a very comprehensive answer and a national strategy. 
the Chiba placenta related to specifically the Gangana hospital and the gynae patient. Uh, I had the experience in Mew, and Mew me mujhe 12 June 2020, Mew din mujhe yaad hai, ki jab Mew me 410 patient, aur humare pas total capacity 426 kb, expand karte gaye, karte gaye, karte gaye, 426 pe saturated ho. Aur raat bhi mujhe yaad hai, ki jab 10 mujhe present aapi yasmi rashad ka telephone aaya, we have 410 patients and we are not going to refuse any patient. Go to Yaki and 800 patients, we have to expand the beds. One night, Asaf Tafel went and we have to add 100 beds and we have to add 100 beds and we have to add 100 beds. So as far as Lahore facility and Dashboard, they were different things keep on expanding. Where the Gaili is exclusive patient, they were not refused to lady accept or lady return. But the specific hospital designated here, that was the Gangara Hospital. And I think we, I must give credit to all the Department of Gaiwi and new people also. They are going to be protected to try to manage. But the whole of the Gaiwi patients are in one hospital. And that was the Gangara. And the rest of the positive people are in the same pressure. That is why the disease burden was relatively more. And you face that, I think, with perfection. But in the future strategy, because Ganga Ram is a popular hospital in Ghani, and I think we must give credit to the first of the ASPI Rashid and the current government, that MCH is not functioning. Its future capacity is 600 feet, and 200 beds are functioning with its MCH. So, if you have such an experience in Ghani, you will be fully prepared, inshallah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. कि एक आप आपसे पहले एक और सवाल सॉरी नवीन से मैं एक पूछना चाहता हूँ सवाल अगर आप बताएं आपका तो जब बर्थडे था वो प्रेग्नेंट पेशेंट्स के साथ और जाइड बर्थडे में आप दौरान क्या था वहाँ पे इंग्लैंड में ये प्रॉब्लम थी कि जो वैक्सीन अपटेक रेट था वो पाकिस्तानी मरीजों में काम था सैडली and there was actually a mortality in Megan जहाँ पे कि जब आज हमारे क्लास वाले मेडिकल डायरेक्टर हैं इन्हें यंग वोमन वो उसके बर्थ को तो पाकिस्तान ही because she had not been vaccinated तो आपका जो obstetrics केयर में कोविड का जो रोल था नवरी आपका क्या एक्सपीरियंस था लाहौर में? Thank you for उसका एक्सपीरियंस मैं ये बताऊँगी कि हमारे पास जैसा सर ने कहा कि we were running taking patients from all over the पूरे पंजाब से लोग के हमारे पास आ रहे थे and most of the patients they were not vaccinated जो हम तो receive कर रहे थे pregnant babies उस वक्त वो vaccinated नहीं थे especially in the first wave और mortality उनमें हमारी बहुत ज़्यादा थी क्योंकि pregnant ladies with covid उसमें mortality we experienced lot of young deaths जो हम अभी तक नहीं भूल रहे लेकिन अब situation different है लोग अब vaccinated हैं जिस सर ने बताया 94 percent 90 more than 90 percent of the population is vaccinated उस वक्त वे experienced our experience बहुत अच्छा नहीं था regarding morbidity and mortality mortality बहुत ज़्यादा Thank you. Hopefully this has been remedied. Yes, after my hearing. Assalamu alaikum. I am Professor Ahmed Kutam. And I am so called FGI for 25 years. And so called Cambodian for 8 years. Because I am not a student. I am the first one to salute you. Who you have given services to the government. And so you have to ask me 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 to ask me. आप से मैं एक एक्सपीरियंस शेयर मैं करना चाहता हूँ, बिकॉज़ फ्रॉम अमेरिका टू जापान एवरी हाउस इज इन नाइट में मेरा बेटा कोविड का चार्ज था जिन्हा हॉस्पिटल वार्ड का और थ्रू और वो जिन्हा हॉस्पिटल कोविड का अभी चार्ज ही रहा तो अल्लाह के फजल से हम चारे बच्चे ले क्योंकि वो भी एवरी हाई डिस्ट्रिक्ट प then go to the bathroom for 15 minutes shower in a garam pari then the man is going to play and then the case is going to be like now come out everybody come out and we are going to go back so Allah has been saved but everything was fine it was finished so the two of us have been covered but what happened to us what happened to us in the previous video so we have said what happened to us 10 days ago then we have been closed and we have been closed and we have been closed and we have been closed ट्रीटमेंट देते रहे, लेकिन अल्लाह के पास से अब ठीक हो गए, बैक टू ड्यूटीज़, थैंक यू वेरी मच।
My name is Dr. Faiz Sultan. I am a registrar at Pedrology and Critical Care Department at Hara Hospital and I have been working here for the last three years. I am also in the COVID pandemic. I have a few queries uh, regarding the like, uh, uh, COVID management. Uh, there are many experts here sitting around us. Uh, like, I have an easy level of health. Like, the COVID management and oxygen requirement is off the step of pace and the management is off the chain. Initially, patients come with the minimal oxygen requirement, which is nasal cannula, where we push for down the chain. After that, we shift the oxygen mask, which is 15 liters of oxygen requirement, or 10 liters of oxygen requirement, so we shift the NRBM. So, what is the next step from NRBM? CPAP, which is the ventilator through us, we apply it. 100% FIO2. The patient doesn't tolerate CPAP, like what I have seen, like what I have seen, उन पेशेंट को मोस्ट ऑफ़ द डॉक्टर्स क्या करते हैं कि लाइक प्री ऑक्सीनेशन करने लग जाते थे बिफोर वेंटिलेशन लाइक द दे शिफ्ट बैक तू द अम्बू मास विथ 14 लीटर ऑफ़ ऑक्सीजन व्हिच इज बेसिकली अ इनिशियल रॉन्ग कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ़ प्री ऑक्सीनेशन ऑफ़ अ पेशेंट वी हु इज़ ऑलरेडी ऑन सी First step, one is the other one. The other one is the other one. After that, when the patient ventilates the patient, then there are many modes which help out for the patient. The most effective which I found there, it is the PRVC mode. Pressure regulatory volume control mode. In which the patient's peak pressure is controlled. If we add the patient to the other mode, then it doesn't have tidal deliver. It doesn't have so much pressure. कि उसको ऑक्सीजनेशन ही नहीं मिलती और वो विदेन फ्यू सेकेंड्स कोलैप्स कर जाता है। जी थैंक यू बेटा। आई थिंक यू हैव वेरी एलोपेटली एक्सप्रेस्ड योर क्लिनिकल एक्सपीरियंस इज वेरी वैल्यूबल। आई वुड सजेस्ट कि आप दोपहर से मिले बात में जो कि बहुत एक्सपीरियंस है आर्टिकल केयर में। शम्सा � um, the Center of Excellence for uh, the Management of Obstetrics and Dining Patient. Like Noreen has told us that the mortality was very high. Probably the reason was that it was so scary and uh, so many uh, people were avoiding it. There was delay in the treatment. Patients were coming from Punjab and uh, the moment uh, DHQ में, DHQ में, private sector में बता चलता था कि patient is having symptoms, maybe COVID or may not be. So people they refuse to touch them. It is not ज़्यादा उस वक्त था और then I would like to appreciate the efforts of gynae department, anesthesia department, ICU, administration. It was a teamwork. Without the teamwork, it would not have been possible for us. और जैसे हमारी लड़कियाँ थीं, the moment patients came और distress इन्होंने उस वक्त केयर की, the shortage of supplies, mask नहीं थे, PPEs नहीं थीं, so that that is life long experience. मेरा खाली जिन लोगों ने वहाँ उस वक्त काम किया, probably they learned a lot. और obstetric patient जैसे बच्चा था, उस वक्त ये नहीं था कि आपने इसमें मैं nursing staff को भी कहूँ. Our nurses, paramedics, everyone was on board and everyone was motivated and probably they did uh, wonders for saving many lives during COVID. Thank you. Thank you. I think we're coming to the end of this session. So, I will ask you three questions, Bari Bari, starting from Hamid. And after that, we will conclude. But uh, there will be a pleasant surprise for you, which is non-medical. Uh, after that, there are some ceremonial things that are left. तो आप मैं आपसे भी पूछना चाहूँगा आपसे एक ही सवाल है तीनों से लेकिन क्योंकि आपका डोमेन फर्क फर्क क्या तो आपने किसी भी उसको डॉस ये बताइए कि जो लेगेसी ऑफ कोविड क्या है इससे रे डिविडेंड जो के हम यूज़ कर सकते हैं और चीजों में मतलब आपने जो एक्सपर्टीज़ रिक्वायर की इस पैंडामिक और ये बहुत अच्छा एक्सपीरियंस लर्निंग के लिए कैसे नेशनल इश्यूज और डिजास्टर्स को सॉल्व कैसे कर सकते हैं एंड 
we were having very difficult times when we were the National Price Monitoring Committee for Katrin Sam to head this. Which we used to get this non-cooperation provinces here, sir. But when this experience happened, and when we were with the provincial governments, the different parties, when they were sitting in the NBMC meeting, their response was, how did they become a deputation? Yes, they could solve this problem. Should I stop? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Then the second lesson was institutionalization of public-private partnership. We have not done anything. The oxygen and oxygen supply factory have been put in place. The government has not been able to do the work of the government. The people have not been able to do the work of the government. The first time we have seen that the government has been able to help them. I think this will also become part of institutional memory. The third lesson was that you have to do the work of the government. इम्पैक्ट आया है जैसे भी बताया गया कि मास का हम एक्सपोर्ट करते हैं एक वक्त था जब आई वाज मेंबर ऑफ बीआर बजट मार्च में हमने एक ऐसा रोशन किया था जिसमें 68 आइटम की एक्जम्पशन दी थी बिकॉज़ दे वर नीडेड फॉर दिस पेंडेमिक मैनेजमेंट पीसीआर टेस्ट की मशीन हमसे नहीं बनी अभी तक वेंटिलेटर our latex gloves are very dependent on Malaysia and now we have a factory in Seattle which are being imported from the rubber but they are being imported here so there is a new set of medicals which was in 1968 and 34 items of Pakistan and half of them are being manufactured and exported outside I think that the opportunity is a great opportunity और कुछ चीजें जो हैं वहाँ पे भी डायरेक्ट रनिंग हैं कुछ इसके बुरे साथ भी आए हैं लोग बहुत भी हुए हैं बहुत शिकायते भी मिली हैं लेकिन उसके साथ साथ रिजिलियंस भी हमारी कॉम में आई है और मेडिकल साइट पे और मेडिकल इक्विपमेंट की साइट पे टेंशन बड़ी है एंड होपफुली बस सिंगल क लेकिन उसमें सबसे इम्पोर्टेंट चीज़ जो है, वो एक टीम बर, दूसरा सीरीज़ ऑफ़ एक्टिविटीज़। सबसे पहली चीज़ जो है, वी शुड स्टार्ट फ्रॉम द अवेयरनेस, एडॉप्ट ऑल द प्रिवेंटिव मेजर्स, देन प्रेपरेशन, प्रेपरेशन इन द फॉर्म ऑफ़ द ट्रेनिंग, ट्रेनिंग जो आपको ऑल दोस पीपल वर इन्वॉल्व्ड and judicious use of those resources. And then the finally, which we have done before, is the research, guideline, and decision of the way forward. Thank you. Kassan, you have a question. Is there a corona dividend? So have we acquired capacity or insights that can be repurposed? For example, can we eradicate hepatitis C from this country? Things like that. So, interesting day, um, just this, your partner. There were a number of times when people said, okay, uh, in fact, when Bill Gates came, he said, okay, so you're doing so well on COVID, what's the issue with volume, or have seen, or people closest, for example. So, just when I started, I asked you, that one thing that the evidence is that it should be done, and it is, but it is the can-do attitude. It was very clear, everybody thought, we will be fit in this disease. In fact, Alhamdulillah, by the grace of God, we came out, so ये चीज़ है can do attitude और उसमें आपने institutionalize करनी है your ability to respond and to fund देखिए अक्सर लोग को ये नहीं मालूम तो over two billion dollars were spent on purchase of vaccine बहुत सारे जब मैं poll करूँ ना इस तरह लोगों से पूछते हैं तो कहते हैं जी ज़्यादातर तो donate हो गया है actually at one point two thirds of them or more were purchased तो तो बाद में आप फिर eventually जो over the vaccine के जो consortia थे उनके तो money नहीं तो you have to spend money so अगर आप hepatitis Egypt is a great example पैसे खर्चे उन्होंने diagnosis किया treat किया and they have actually brought their numbers down 
So, tuberculosis is the same story, and I think polio is also a story in this situation, although the challenge is totally different. So, I think the great division is the fact that we can do it, and we don't have to be afraid of this problem, and we don't have to be afraid of Pakistan. You all have to do it, but I think that's the biggest challenge in all of this. Thank you very much, uh, distinguished panel ka or distinguished audience. Thank you very much. This concludes the medical component. Now for some light relief before we finish. The light relief is. Please finish the poster competition. FGMU announce karna. Ji, bil, zaroor kijiye ga. Mujhe two minute kijiye. This me ke main ek non medical baat karna chahta hu. Or wo hai related to Hamid's poetry. Jaise ke maine shuru karne ke liye kya tha. Hamid ka most of his book. Show it to the audience. So they know they recently read here. अपनी जन्मने वाले में हमें हमारे वो एक वो अब्दुल सलाम अब्दुल की बहुत मशहूर रस्म है कि अगर कभी मेरी याद आए कितने लोगों ने सुनी याद कर रखा है तो आप लोग तो वो तो पढ़े लिखे हैं तो वो कुछ यूँ शुरू होती है कि अगर कभी मेरी याद आए तो चांद रातों की नर दिलगीर रोशनी में किसी सितारे को देख लेना। अगर वो नसले फलक से उड़कर तुम्हारे कदमों में आगे रहे तो ये जान लेना, ये इस तैयारा तो मेरे दिल का। अगर ना आए, अगर ना आए, मगर ये मुमकिन नहीं कि सराह है कि तुम किसी पे निकाह डालो और उसकी दीवारें जाना टूटे, वो अपनी नस्ली ना भूल जाए। ये दर्शन है जो कि हमारी जवानी में बहुत कारामत हुआ करती थी, लेकिन और आपका निशोक के हामिद की जवानी में भी आगे से ये हमारे कारामत में काम होगा। तो इन्होंने इसको रीराइट किया अपनी इस किताब में। तो जो रीराइटिंग है वो इतनी रोमांटिक तो नहीं है, लेकिन आप खुद ही सुन लीजिए हामिद। आर्मी में कहा था कि ये डेढ़ उम्र की शायरी है साहिब साहिब तो इसमें एक ऑटोमेटिक का शेयर भी लिखा हुआ है मैंने कि अब अब तो सीधी नहीं होती कभी मुड़ जाए जो काम अब तो सीधी नहीं होती कभी मुड़ जाए जो काम उससे पहली सी मोहब्बत मेरे में हो गई हम जैसा हमने लिखी थी मोहब्बत की पहली नज़म तो मैंने लिखी है मोहब्बत की आखिरी नज़म اگر کبھی میری یاد آئے اگر کبھی میری یاد آئے تو ساہروں پر لگے درختوں کے شاخ پتوں میں ناریل کو تراش کرنا اگر وہ شاخ شجر سے اڑکے تمہارے سر پر ٹپک پڑے تو یہ جان لینا کہ بھائی نیوٹن نے جو کہا تھا غلط نہیں اگر نہ آئے مگر یہ موچی نہیں کس طرح آئے کہ تم کسی پر نگاہ ڈالو تو اس بچارے کا دل نہ ڈوبے وہ اپنی مستی نہ بھول جائے اور اگر کبھی میری یاد آئے تو گھر کے رستے میں آنے والی بڑی دکانوں کی بیسمنٹوں میں دیکھ لینا وہ چوتھی ڈائیں گے شیشے والے بڑے فریزر کی چوک شیلفوں پر غور کرنا دہی کے ڈبے کے ساتھ بیٹھا تو میں ملوں گا اگر کبھی میں یاد آئے تو گھر کے رستے میں آنے والی بڑی دکانوں کی بیسمنٹوں میں دیکھ لینا وہ چوتھی ڈائیں گے شیشے والے بڑے فریزر کی چوک شیلفوں پر غور کرنا دہی کے ڈبے کے ساتھ بیٹھا تو میں ملوں گا اور تمہاری یادوں کے آسمان کے افق سے ڈوبا میں اپنی دفتر کی فائلوں میں طلوع ہو کر وہیں پہ فائل کے ساتھ سکیتے میں بن گیا کسی سے آنے ریکارڈ کی پر سے پوچھ لینا وہیں پہ ہوں گا اور اگر درستوں پہ فائلوں میں فریزروں میں نہ پاؤ مجھ کو تو جان لینا تمہارے ڈر سے کسی یہ جیبو غریب گوشے میں چھپ گیا ہوں ریپورٹ کرنے جو گھر سے نکلو تو بیٹھ کے نیچے بھی دیکھ لیں For all students, we have read the last boxes.
और इतने व्यस्त हैं उनकी ये जान का सामने अरेंज रहने की है और ताबिंदा समेत तमाम व्यस्त का भी बहुत शुक्रिया डेवी कौंसिल मेरी नाइन्टी परसेंट मौजूद है फाइनली स्टूडेंट सारे मौजूद है सबका बहुत शुक्रिया और पी एम ए को रिप्रजेंट कर रहे हैं अशरफ निजामी साहब उनका शुक्रिया और इस वक्त कोविड का ये सेमिनार है तो मुझे याद आ रहे हैं डॉक्टर तारिक शफी और डॉक्टर वरदा यहाँ पर मौजूद है वरदा भी अभी अपने पर्सनल एक्सपीरियंसेस शेयर करना चाहूँगी जैसे जब कोविड आया था इट वॉज मार्च ट्वेंटी और किसी को मालूम नहीं था कि पीपीई क्या चीज़ है और आई स्टिल रिमेंबर दैट दैट फियर दैट आई फेल जब मैं हम लोग का आइसोलेशन वार्ड था उसमें मैं गई और मैंने नर्स से पूछा और माई गोल गोल टू दिस रूम तो उसने मुझे कहा वो वो किस पड़ी है पहन लो मैंने कहा शू कवर्स शी सेट नो शू कवर्स एंड दिस इज़ हाउ इट ऑल स्टार्ट Uh, and then we would see patients coming in slightly breathless then becoming more dependent on oxygen and then passing away and this is the helplessness cycle that we saw and you know people like me jo ke apne career ke aakhri ek tihai hisse mein hain unke upar bahut asar pada mere dimag pe to kam se kam bahut asar hua it has changed me forever it has actually made me realize how helpless we are as doctors and how helpless i was as a human being not being able to help anyone और जो मेरी तबीयत थी यही कि होल्डिंग अ पेशेंट्स हैंड व्हेन देर इन दिस कंफर्ट बिकॉज ऑफ दैट वी कुड नॉट गोल मेयर दिस पेशेंट्स टू टच देम प्रॉपर्ली कुछ नहीं कर पाते थे उनके लिए सो इन दैट सिचुएशन यू नो आई एक्चुअली सलूट फैसल बिकॉज ही मस्ट हैव गॉन थ्रू ऑल दैट फियर इन दोस डिसीजंस दैट ही वाज टेकिंग एंड ही हैज मेड दो दिस एंड एंड यू नो फॉर्चून फेवर्स द बोल्ड ही मस्ट हैव टेकन फ्रॉम बोल्ड दिस इज मस्ट हैव डन दैट एंड यू नो आई रियली रियली अप्रिशिएट it we must have been traumatized like i would have been and you know coming out like this and talking like that you know really 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 uh, i i really thank you and and for uh, professor gondal i have a couple of words to say i was joking with athar ke hum musliman hai to hamara qibla pehle uh, jo tha baitul maqdis tha aur hum us taraf namaz karke padhte the और मुँह और फिर हमारा खाना काबा हो गया तो हमने उस तरफ मुँह कर लिया तो हम एफ में आ गए उनके साथ पीछे पीछे उनके सो यू नो वी ऑलवेज बीन सो सपोर्टिव एंड ऑल द थिंग्स दैट वी ऑलवेज सजेस्टेड दैट वी वॉन्टेड टू कलेबरेट विद ही हैज नेवर सेट नो टू अस एंड हो जाती थी ये सारी जो Uh, हम लोगों की होती थी कॉमन मीटिंग्स होती थी सैटरडे मॉर्निंग को एक दफा यूज टू बी गोइंग फॉर वर्ड राउंड एंड यू वुड से मैं ऑन कॉल हूँ जा रहा हूँ ऑलवेज देयर सो यू नो आई वांट टू क्लैप फॉर दिस एंड एंड ऑल ऑफ अस यू नो इंक्लूडिंग हामिद इट रियली रियली ब्राइटन्स मी एंड इट मेक्स मी फील सो प्राउड कि पाकिस्तान में कितने अच्छे फैसले हुए एंड देर इज़ सो मैनी पीपल हु आर सेटिंग अ गुड प्रेसिडेंस एंड फॉर यू हु हैव टू टेक ऑन वॉट दे आर डूइंग नाउ आई थिंक कि इंसान मिसालों से ही लर्न करता है क्योंकि इसी तरह अल्लाह ताला भी चाहते हैं कि हम मिसालों से उन्होंने एक्सप्लेन किया आप भी इन्हीं से सीखें जैसे इन्होंने अच्छे फैसले किए मुल्क के हक में वाइल वीवर इन द यू के हमें इतने कॉन्ट्रोडिक्ट्री मैसेज मिलते थे एक दिन वो कहते थे कि जी आप चले जाए खाना खाने बाहर दूसरे दिन नहीं कर नहीं खाना खाने चले जाए लेकिन एटलीस्ट यहाँ पे कॉन्स्टेंट स्टांस था जिसके अंदर आप इफेक्ट्स को देख सकते थे कि एक बंद हुई है चीज़ तो उसका आप इफेक्ट देख लेते थे यू वुड लीव इट फॉर माइ और वहाँ पे हर रोज़ चीज़ें चेंज होती थी देर वॉज नथिंग दैट वी कुड डू अबाउट थिंग्स एंड आपको पता है कैसी हमारी मोटेलिटी थी एंड वॉट दी आउटकम्स वर लाइफ पी पी के झगड़े थे देर वर सो मैनी पीपल फ्राम द ब्लैक एंड एथिक माइनॉरिटी ग्रुप जिनमें के मोटेलिटी ज़्यादा हो गई थी एज़ कम्पेयर टू वाइट पीपल क्योंकि हम लोग फोर फ्रंट पे होते थे और हम पी पीज नहीं मिलती थी सो आई थिंक लुकिंग बैक एंड लुकिंग एट पाकिस्तान इट्स रियली रियली हार्टन्स मी एंड इट ब्राइटन्स माई सोल टू सी पीपल लाइक फैसल एंड हामिद एंड प्रोफेसर गोंदल जिन्होंने इतना काम किया यू नो यू सी द फ्लो कि एक बंदे ने फैसला किया दूसरे ने प्रक्योर किया और तीसरा ग्राउंड वर्क कर रहा था इन द हॉस्पिटल सो द फ्लो इज देयर एंड दिस इज द फ्लो ऑफ लाइफ एंड आई होप दिस विल कंटिन्यू and for other i hope that you will be able to write a good write up from this one please thank you very much tabinda aur ab hum sab ke aur tabinda ke ke block ka par janab gondal sir janab aap agar koi hukum irshad ke bana chahe ya koi naam dena chahe apni raya ko to kya hai mera hal main kafi takreer kar chuka hu अतर अहमद सही साहब ने कहा था कि पोस्टर कंपटीशन जहाँ पे होगा 
और वो प्राइजेस की अनाउंसमेंट किंग एडवर्ड में होगी मैंने कहा नहीं पैरेलल पोस्टर कंपटीशन यहाँ एफ वालों का होगा और एफ वालों को प्राइजेस मिलेंगे यहाँ पे तो अभी जीस या धमाना जिन्होंने भी पोस्टर कंपटीशन है उनका अनाउंसमेंट कर दें और इनके जो प्राइजेज हैं वो हम ट्वेंटी या नाइनटीन जब आप डिसाइड करेंगे आप और फिलहाल ये जो हमारे स्पीकर जिनकी सोवियत रह गए उनको भी दें हाँ As you have seen all the posters, it was a very difficult for us to decide which one is is the first. Uh, these posters were uh, taken from Department of Community, Department of Oryx, Department of Anatomy, Department of Physiology. Students have made their and this को कहते हैं अंतक मेहनत से students ने काम किया हुआ है। so we have categorized them in four under four heads: models, drawing posters, research posters, and awareness posters. मेरे साथ हैं डॉक्टर आलिया, professor of anatomy, डॉक्टर अज़रा महमूद, she is director of it. So we three decided among models the poster competition was diabetes mellitus. It showed very well the diseases, the uh, micro and microvascular uh, complications. So it among the models diabetes mellitus made by the students of second year. Ms. Amna Masood Gondal, Eliza Brad, Ikhya Gurukha. In the drawing poster, among drawing poster, it was a salivary branch by the Department of Anatomy. Second year student, Tanzeel Sadek. Cardiovascular health in women. Thank you, Iqbal. Awareness poster. It was dissociative identity disorders made by fourth year students, batch C1. डॉक्टर अज़रा एंड डॉक्टर आलिया और मैं सर से रिक्वेस्ट करूंगी कि सर आपने ऐसे करें जो आपकी कमेटी डिसाइड करेगी हम चारों को प्राइज देंगे ऑन ट्वेंटी कंक्लूडिंग सेशन और अभी सिर्फ स्पीकर्स के वो जो सीट देने और फैसल साहब ने भी जाने आफ्टर फाइव मिनट विल कंक्लूड लेकिन ये तमाम बच्चे अपने लाल बाग से जरूर लेके जाइएगा और यस खाना खा के जाइए the president can call you get up in the top in the open idea or dr. Fessel doctor for that is not option you want to talk to my team dr. Azal Alam dr. Daniel from the third professor camera college father
Nicole, otro pantalla aquí. Doctor Naimuji. 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 Doctor Panelists of this session, Dr. Hamid Khatib. She is for the chairs of the session. The first one is for Professor Anita Nimu. जो इन बच्चियों का आपने देखा है जोश आपको शील देने 
किंग एडवर्ड का रिकॉर्ड करके आपने भेजना है ऐसे ही नहीं हो सकता ना